Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah A-C-H-A-P-T-E-R I Mishnah There are four New Years on the first of Nisan is New Year for Kings and for Festivals on the first of E-L-U-L is New Year for the Tithe of Cattle R Eliezer and R Simeon However place this on the first of Tishri on the first of Tishri is New Year for Years for Release and Jubilee Years for Plantation and for Tithe of Vegetables on the first of Shabbat is New Year for Trees according to the ruling of Beth Shammai Beth Hillel However place it on the 15th of that month tomorrow for kings why this law are his said for dealing with documents as we have learned bonds if antedated are invalid but if postdated are valid our rabbis learned if a king ascended the throne on the 29th of Adar as soon as the first of Nisan arrives he is reckoned to have reigned a year if on the other hand he ascended the throne on the first of Nisan he is not reckoned to have reigned a year till the next first of Nisan comes around the master has said if a king ascends the throne on the 29th of Adar as soon as the first of Nisan arrives he is reckoned to have reigned a year Talmud Mas Rosh Hashanah this teaches us that Nisan is a new year for kings and that one day in a year is reckoned as a year but if he ascended the throne on the first of Nisan he is not reckoned to have reigned a year till the next first of Nisan comes around as surely is self evident it had to be stated in view of the case where his election to the throne was determined upon in Adar you might think that in that case we should reckon him by the next first of Nisan to have reigned two years we are therefore told that this is not so our rabbis learned if a king died in Adar and was succeeded by another in Adar we can designate the rest of the year up to the first of Nisan as belonging to either if he died in Nisan and was succeeded by another in Nisan we can date the year by either if he died in Adar and was succeeded by another in Nisan. The earlier year is dated by the first and the later by the second the master has here said if he died in Adar and was succeeded by another we can date the year by either surely this is obvious you might think that we never date the same year by two kings hence we are told that this can be done if the first died in Nisan and was succeeded by another in Nisan the year may be dated by either this also seems to be obvious you might think that when we lay down that a day in the year is reckoned. As a year we mean only at the end of the year but not at the beginning therefore we are told that this is not so if the first died in Adar and he was succeeded by another in this and the earlier year is dated by the first and the later by the second as surely is obvious it had to be stated in view of the case where his election was determined upon from Adar and he is succeeding his father in that case you might think that we should reckon two years to him we are therefore told that this is not so are you had and said how do we know from the scripture that the years of kings reigns are always reckoned as commencing from this and because it says and it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Ziv which is the second month year Solomon's reign is put side by side with the exodus from Egypt to indicate that just as the years from the exodus from Egypt are reckoned from Nisan so the years of Solomon's reign commence with Nisan but how do we know that the years from the exodus from Egypt itself are reckoned as commencing with Nisan perhaps we reckon them from Tishri do not imagine such a thing for it is written and Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fifth month on the first day of the month. And it is further written and it came to pass in the fortieth year in the eleventh month on the first day of the month that Moses spoke etc. Now since the text when referring to a places it in the fortieth year and again when referring to the following Shabbat places it also in the fortieth year we may conclude that Tishri is not the beginning of the year this however is not conclusive I grant you that the former text states explicitly that the year spoken of was from the going forth from. Egypt, but how do we know that the year mentioned in the latter text is reckoned from the Exodus? Perhaps it is from the setting up of the tabernacle. We may reply to this on the model of our Papa, who said in another connection that the occurrence of the expression 20th year in two contexts provides us with a Gazerisha wa. So here I may say that the occurrence of the expression 40th year in the two contexts provides us with a Gazerisha wa, showing that just as in the one case, the date is reckoned from the Exodus, so in the other case also. But how do you know that in respect of these two incidents that of was prior, perhaps that of Shabbat was prior? Do not imagine such a thing, for it is written in connection with the latter after he had smitten Sihon, and when Aaron died, Sihon was still alive, as it is written Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, and the Canaanite, the king of Arad, heard what was the report that he heard. He heard that Aaron had died, and that the clouds of Glory had departed and he judged that it was now permitted to attack Israel and this is intimated in the verse and all the congregation saw W.A. that Aaron was dead commenting on which Arabab said do not read Wayru but W.A. and they were seen the next word being translated in accordance with the dictum of Resh Lakish for Resh Lakish said he has four significations if perhaps but for an objection to this it may be asked are the two things alike the verse there speaks of Canaan whereas here it speaks of Sihon it has been taught Sihon Arad and Canaan are all one he was called Sihon as resembling a Sayah of the wilderness he was called Canaan after his kingdom and as for his real name this was Arad according to other authorities he was called Arad as resembling an Arad wild ass of the wilderness and Canaan after his kingdom while as for his real name this was Sihon but can I not suppose that New Year is in ER do not imagine such a thing for it is written and it came to pass in the first month in the second year on the first day of the month that the tabernacle was reared up and it is written elsewhere and it came to pass in the second year in the second month that the cloud was taken up front over the tabernacle of the testimony seeing that the text when referring to Nisan places it in the second year and when referring to Er places it also in the second year we may conclude that Er is not new year can I suppose then that new year is in seven do not imagine such a thing for it is written in the third month after the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt and if seven is new year it should say in the third month in the second year after the children of Israel etc but why not say that new year is in Tammuz in Abinadar rather said our Eliezer we learn that Nisan is new year from here and he began to build in the second month in the second in the fourth year of his reign what is here meant by in the second does not the superfluous word mean the second by which his reign is reckoned Robin is strongly demurred to this why not he said suppose it to mean the second day of the month in that case it would have said distinctly on the second day of the month but may I not suppose it means on the second day of the week this cannot be for two reasons one is that we never find the second day of the week mentioned in scripture and the other is that the second chini second is put on the same footing as the first chini indicating that just as the first chini refers to a month so the second chini refers to a month it has been taught in accordance with our Yohanan how do we know from the scripture that the years of kings reigns are always reckoned as commencing from this and because it says and it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt etc and it is further written and Aaron the priest went up to mount or at the commandment of the Lord etc. And it is further written and it came to pass in the fortieth year in the eleventh month and it is further written after he had smitten Sihon etc. And it is further written and all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead etc. And it is further written and it came to pass in the first month in the second year etc. And it is further written and it came to pass in the second year in the second month etc. And it is further written in the third month after the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt etc. And it is further written and he began to build etc. Arista said the rule that new year for kings is in Nisan was only meant to apply to the kings of Israel but the years of non-Israelitish kings are reckoned from Tishri as it says the words of Nehemiah the son of Hashalia now it came to pass in the month of Kislev in the twentieth year etc. And it is written further and it came to pass in the month of Nisan in the twentieth year. Of Artaxerxes now since when speaking of Kislev he places it in the 20th year and when speaking of Nisan he places it also in the 20th we may conclude that New Year is not in Nisan this however is not conclusive in the latter text it is true it is expressly stated that it was the 20th year of Artaxerxes but in the former how do we know that the reign of Artaxerxes is referred to perhaps Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah be some other system of dating is adopted our Papa replied that occurrence in each text of the expression 20th year provides us with a Gezerisha Wa indicating that just as in the latter case it means of the reign of Artaxerxes so in the former but how do you know that the incident of Kislev was prior perhaps the incident of Nisan was prior do not
Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said to me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldst send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, The queen also sitting by him, for how long will thy journey be, and when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I sent him a time. Our Joseph sought to disprove the statement that the years of non-Israelitish kings are reckoned from Tishri as follows: It is written in the four and twentieth day of the month, in the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king, and it is further written in the seventh month, in the second year, in the one and twentieth day of the month. Now, if it is as you say, then we should have here in the Seventh month in the third year, Arabah replied, Cyrus was a worthy king, and therefore they reckoned his years like those of the kings of Israel. Our Joseph demurred strongly against this last notion. For one thing, he said, If this is so, then there is a contradiction between two biblical texts. For it is written, and the house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was the sixth year of Darius the king. And in connection with this, it has been taught at that period in the year. Following Ezra went up from Babylon along with his band of exiles. Now it is written further, and he Ezra came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. And if it is as you say, it should be in the eighth year. Further, is there any connection between your answer and the question you speak of Cyrus? And the text speaks of Darius. It has been taught Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes were all one. He was called Cyrus because he was a worthy king. Artaxerxes after his realm. While Darius was his own name, all the same, the contradiction still remains. There is no contradiction. The one verse speaks of him before he degenerated, the other after he degenerated. Archahan is strongly demurred to the saying, Did he indeed degenerate? Is it not written Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, and that which they have need of both young bullocks and rams and lambs for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the word of the priests that are in Jerusalem? Let it be given them day by day without fail, said our Isaac to him, Here is something out of your own package that they may offer sacrifices of sweet savor unto the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and of his sons. But even so is not the action still a meritorious one, seeing that it has been taught if a man says, I offer the seller for charity in order that my children may live and in order that through it I may merit the future world, he may still be a holy righteous man. There is no Contradiction this statement applies to Israelites there we speak of heathens alternatively I may say that we know he deteriorated because it is written with three rows of great stories and a row of new timber and let the expenses be given out of the king's house why did he make these conditions he thought to himself if the Jews revolt against me I will burn it with fire but did not Solomon do the same thing as it is written three rows of hewn stone and a row of cedar being Solomon placed it wood above and he placed it below Solomon sunk it in the building and he did not sink it in the building Solomon plastered it over and he did not plaster it over our Joseph or as some say our Isaac said once do we know that he deteriorated from here and the king said unto me the shekel also sitting by him what is shekel Rabbi Bilima said in the name of Rabbi Shedog but if that is so what are we to make of the verse but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven and they have brought it vessels of his house before thee and thou and thy lords thy shakeleth and thy concubines have drunk wine in them now how can shakele here be a dog do dogs drink wine this is no difficulty as we can suppose that it was taught to drink but one of the verse where it is written king's daughters are among thy favorites at thy right hand doth stand the shakele in gold of over now if shakele is a dog what promise is the prophet bringing to israel what he means is this because the torah is as dear to israel as a shakele to the heathens you have earned as your reward the gold of over alternatively i may say that shakele does as a rule mean queen but in this case rabbi Bilima had a tradition that it means dog and the reason why in the text it is called shakele is because it was as dear to him as a queen or possibly because he put it on the queen's seat alternatively i may say that we know he deteriorated from here unto a hundred talents of silver and to a hundred measures of wheat and to a hundred baths of wine and salt without prescribing how much at first there was no limit but now he made a limit but perhaps at first he simply had not decided on the limit the truth is that the best explanation is that which was given first and for festivals how can new year for the festivals be on the first of Nisan it is surely on the fifteenth of Nisan Arista said what it means is that the festival which occurs in it is a new year for the festivals the legal import of this rule is for determining when one who makes a vow transgresses the precept of not delaying and our Simeon is here followed as it has been taught whether a man makes a vow or sanctifies or makes a valuation as soon as three festivals elapse before he carries out his word he transgresses the precept of not delaying our Simeon says the three festivals must be in order with Passover first so to our Simeon Boa used to say the festivals refer to are sometimes three in number sometimes four sometimes Five, for instance, if a man made a vow before Passover, they are three, if before Pentecost, five, if before Tabernacles, four, our rabbis taught those who are liable for a money valuation, for a valuation, for a harem, for consecrations, for sin offerings, trespass offerings, burnt offerings, and peace offerings, charity contributions, tithes, firstborn, and tithe of cattle, Paschal, Lamb, Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, be gleanings, forgotten sheep, and corners of the field, as soon as three festivals have elapsed. Transgress the precept of not delaying our Simeon said the three festivals must be in order with Passover, first, our Meir said, as soon as one festival has passed, he transgresses the precept of not delaying our Eliezer, B. Jacob said, as soon as two festivals have elapsed, he transgresses the precept of not delaying our Eliezer, son of our Simeon said, as soon as the feast of Tabernacles has passed, he transgresses the precept of not delaying what is the reason of the first tanel, let us see, he says the text. Has been speaking of them the three festivals why then does it repeat on the feast of unleavened bread on the feast of weeks and on the feast of tabernacles we must understand it to be laying down the rule for not delaying our Simeon again says that there was no need even so to repeat on the feast of tabernacles of which the text was just speaking why then was it mentioned to show that this one must be the last what is our Meir's reason because it is written and thither thou shalt come and thither ye shall bring what do the rabbis say to this they say that this constitutes only a positive injunction what has our Meir to say to this he says that since the all merciful told him to bring and he did not bring automatically he has transgressed the precept of not delaying what is the reason of our Eliezer B. Jacob because it is written these ye shall offer unto the Lord in your appointed seasons the minimum of seasons is to what do the rabbis say to this they say that this Word is required for the exposition of Arjuna for Arjuna said all the festivals are put on the same footing with one another to show that all atone for the uncleanness of the sanctuary and its holy things what is the reason of our Eliezer son of Simeon as it has been taught our Eliezer son of Simeon said there was no need for the feast of tabernacles to be mentioned in this verse as the text was already speaking of it why then was it mentioned to show that this one is the determining factor what exposition then do our Meir and our Eliezer B. Jacob give of the words on the feast of unleavened bread and on the feast of weeks and on the feast of tabernacles they require them for the same purpose as our Eliezer B. Ashai for our Eliezer B. Ashai said how do we know that a sacrifice due but not brought on Pentecost can be made up for during the next seven days because it says on the feast of unleavened bread and on the feast of weeks and on the feast of tabernacles just as a sacrifice not Brought on the first day of the feast of Passover can be made up for during the next seven days, so a sacrifice not brought on the feast of weeks can be made up for during the next seven days. But why should not the feast of weeks be put on the same footing in this respect as the feast of tabernacles? So that just as in that case the duration of the festival is eight days, so here eight days should be allowed. The eighth day of tabernacles is a separate festival. I can still say that we call the eighth day a separate festival in respect of PZRKSHB, but that in the matter of compensation, all agree that this can be made on it for the first day, as we have learned. If one did not bring his festival sacrifice on the first day of tabernacles, he can bring during the whole of the festival, including the last day of the festival. If you grasp a lot, you cannot hold it. If you grasp a little, you can hold it. But what injunction then did the All Merciful indicate by mentioning the festival? Of tabernacles in this verse it is mentioned in order to be put on the same footing as the feast of Passover in
Incidentally, Arshis hate said Paschal Lem here means a peace offering brought in lieu of the Paschal Lem, but if that is so, this is covered by the term peace offerings. Our authority mentions a peace offering which is brought in lieu of the Paschal Lem, and he also mentions the peace offerings which are brought for their own sake. You might be inclined to think that the former being brought in lieu of the Paschal Lem Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah B is on the same footing as the Paschal Lem. Therefore, we are told that this is not so. What is the authority in the scripture for these rules as our rabbis have taught when thou shalt vow about this tells me only the rule for a vow. How do I know that a free will offering is also included? We have here the term vow, and in another place we find the expression if a vow or a free will offering, just as there a free will offering goes with the vow, so here a free will offering goes with it to the Lord thy God. This indicates money. Valuations, valuations, devoted things and consecrated things, thou shalt not be slack to pay it, but not its substitute, for he will surely require it. This indicates sin offerings, trespass offerings, burnt offerings, and peace offerings, the Lord thy God. This indicates charity, contributions, tithes, and firstborn from me. This indicates leanings, forgotten sheep, and corners of the field, and it will be sin in thee, but not sin in thy offering. The Master has just said, Thou shalt not be slack in paying it, and not its substitute, substitute for what if the substitute for a burnt offering or a peace offering is meant. This is actually offered. If the substitute for a sin offering this is allowed to perish, how then are we to understand its substitute? The substitute for a thanksgiving offering is our high taught. If a thanksgiving offering became mixed up with its substitute and one of them died, there is no remedy for the other, for what is he the owner to do? Shall he offer it and offer? The bread with it, perhaps it is a substitute, shall he offer it without the bread, perhaps it is the original thank offering, but if that is so, seeing that it cannot be offered, why do I require a text to exclude it? Or she's hate replied in point of fact, the intention of the verse is to exclude the substitutes for burnt offerings and peace offerings, and we are dealing here with the case of one which was kept over during two festivals and then became blemished, and the owner made it profane by substituting another, and this was kept over one festival. You might imagine in this case that since it takes the place of the first, it is as if it had been kept over for three festivals, therefore we are told that this is not so, but on the view of our mayor who said that as soon as one festival has been allowed to elapse, there is a transgression of the precept not to delay what can be said. Robert replied here, we are dealing with a case where the animal became blemished during the festival, and he Declared it profane by substituting another, and this was kept over the festival. You might imagine that since it takes the place of the first, it is as if it had been kept over during the whole of the festival. Therefore, we are told that this is not so, and it will be sin in thee, but not sin in thy offering. Do we derive this lesson from here? Surely it is derived from the text adduced by the others, as it has been taught. Others say, I might say that a firstling after a year has passed is like consecrated things that have become disqualified, and so is disqualified. Therefore, it says, And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God the tithe of thy corn, and of thy wine, and of thy oil, and the firstlings of thy herd, and of thy flock. Here, firstling is mentioned alongside of tithe to indicate that just as tithe is not disqualified by being kept from one year to another, so a firstling is not disqualified by being kept from one year to another. It was still necessary to learn the lesson in. The other way for you might have imagined that this applies only to a firstling which is not for appeasement but consecrated things which are for appeasement will not appease if kept over therefore I am told that this is not so but still I may object that Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah the lesson is derived from the exposition of Ben Aze as it has been taught Ben Aze said what is the point of the word although it since it says thou shalt not be slack in paying it I might think that a vow which is delayed also fails to appease therefore it says that this one fails to appease but a delayed vow does not fail to appease no what we must say is in the sin but not in thy wife a sin for you might think that since our Yohanan or as some say our Eliezer has said a man's wife dies only because money is rightfully demanded of him and he has it not as it says why should he take thy bed from under thee and so I would say that his wife will die also because of this transgression of not Delaying, we are therefore told that this is not so. Our rabbis taught that which is gone out of thy lips. This is an affirmative precept. Thou shalt observe. This is a negative precept. And do this is an injunction to the Beth Din to make thee do according as thou hast vowed. This means a vow to the Lord thy God. This means sin offerings and trespass offerings, burnt offerings and peace offerings. A free will offering. This has its literal meaning. Even that which thou hast promised. This means things sanctified for the repair of the temple with thy mouth. This means charity. The master has here said that that which is gone out of thy lips implies an affirmative precept. Why do I require the words for this purpose? This lesson can be derived from the words. And thither thou shalt come. And thither ye shall bring. Thou shalt observe. This implies a negative precept. Why do I require these words? This lesson can be derived from thou shalt not be slack in paying it. And do this is an injunction to. The Beth Din to make thee do why do I require these words this lesson can be derived from he shall bring it as it has been taught he shall bring it this teaches us that he is to be constrained if necessary I might say even against his will therefore it says of his own will what is to be done then we constrain him until he says I am willing what is the answer the one set of texts deal with the case where he had pledged himself but had not yet set aside the animal the other with the case where he had set it aside but had not yet offered it and both are required for if the rule had been laid down only for the case where he had pledged himself but had not yet set aside the animal I might say that the reason is because he has not yet carried out his word but where he has set it aside but not yet offered it I might argue that wherever it is it is in the treasury of the all merciful these texts therefore were necessary and if again the rule had been laid down only for the cases where he has set the animal aside but not yet offered it I might say that the reason is because he is keeping it by him but if he has pledged himself without having yet set it aside I might argue that his mere word counts for nothing therefore these texts are also necessary but how can you say that one set of texts is where he has pledged himself but not yet set aside seeing that free will offering is mentioned and we have learned what is a vow when a man says I pledge myself to bring a burnt offering what is a free will offering where a man says I declare this to be a burnt offering what is the difference in practice between a vow and a free will offering if an animal set aside to perform a vow dies or is stolen he has to replace it but if a free will offering dies or is stolen he is not bound to replace it Robert replied you can find a free will offering of this kind in the case where he said I pledge myself to bring a burnt offering on condition that I shall not be obliged to Replace it with thy mouth. This is charity. Rabbi said, for paying charity offerings, one becomes liable at once. What is the reason? Because the poor are waiting. Surely this is obvious. Not so, since you might think that as charity is mentioned in the passage dealing with offerings, it need not be paid till three festivals have elapsed. As in the case of offerings, we are therefore told that this is not so. Only the others, the offerings were made by the all merciful, dependent on the festivals. But this charity is not so, because the poor are waiting. Rabbi said, as soon as one festival has elapsed, he transgresses an affirmative precept. The following objection was raised. Our Joshua and our Papias testified regarding the offspring of a peace offering that it should also be brought as a peace offering. Our Papias said, I testify that we had a heifer which was sacrificed as a peace offering, and we ate it on Passover, and we ate its young as a peace offering on the festival. Now I can understand. Why it was not offered on Passover, the ground being that it was still too short-lived, but how could the young be kept over Pentecost, which would involve the transgression of an affirmative precept? Arzib said in the name of Rabbah, it may have been Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah be that it was sick on Pentecost. Or Ashi said what is meant by the statement, we ate its young as a peace offering on the festival, it means the feast of weeks. What says the other to this? He says that wherever Pentecost is mentioned in connection with Passover, it is called assembly. Ezra Rabbah said, as soon as three festivals have elapsed, he transgresses every day the precept of not delaying the following was cited in objection to this. The rule both for a firstling and for all consecrated animals is that so soon as they have been kept back a year, even without three festivals or three festivals, even in less than a year, the precept of not delaying is transgressed. What objection is there here? Arkahana said. The objection is a sound one. See now the Tana is looking for prohibitions. Let him then state he transgresses the precept of not delaying every day. What says the other to this? He says that the Tana is only anxious to stamp the act as forbidden. He does
possible on the basis of what Arshime learned Pentecost is sometimes on the fifth of the third month, sometimes on the sixth, and sometimes on the seventh. For instance, if both of them are full, it is on the fifth. If both of them are defective, it is on the seventh. If one is full and the other defective, it is on the sixth. Who is the Tana who takes a different view from Arshime? It is the others, as it has been taught. Others say that between Pentecost and Pentecost, between New Year and New Year, there is always an interval of four days of the week, or in a leap year five. Our Zara asked, does the rule of not delaying apply to an heir? Do we reason that the Almerciful has said, when thou shalt vow a vow, and he has not made a vow, or perhaps we apply the text, and thither thou shalt come, and thither shall ye bring, and he also is liable come, and here since our high has taught from the Miamak, this excludes the year, but this Miamak is required to bring under the rule leanings. Forgotten sheep and corners of the field, I expound to Mac and I expound me. Mac Arzera also asked, Does the rule of not delaying apply to a woman? Do we reason that she is not obliged to appear at Jerusalem on the festivals, or perhaps do we reason that she is enjoined to rejoice? Abe replied, Is not the answer provided by the fact that she is enjoined to rejoice? But could Abe say the seeing that Abe has said that a woman is made joyful by her husband? Abe was answering Arzera on his own. Premises the question was raised from what day is the year of the firstling reckoned? Abe said from the hour of its birth, Arahabi Jacob said from the time when it can be used for appeasement, nor is there any conflict of opinion between them. One speaks of an animal without blemished Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, the other of an animal with a blemish, can a blemished animal be eaten on the day of birth? We speak of one of which we know for certain that it has not been born prematurely or rabbis. Taught on the first of Nisan is New Year for months for leap years and for the offering of Shekalim. Some say also for the renting of houses New Year for months. Whence do we know this? Because it is written, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take unto them every man a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household, and yet shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and they shall kill it, etc. It is also written elsewhere. Observe the month of Abib, springing corn. Now, which is the month in which there is springing corn? You must say this is Nisan and this is called first. But cannot I say that it is Eir? We require springing corn and there is none. But cannot I say that it is Adar? We require the bulk of the springing corn and this we have not in Adar. But does the text say the bulk of the springing? Corn rather said our Hisda, we learned it from here, howbeit on the fifteenth day of the seventh month when ye have gathered in the fruits of the land what is the month in which there is gathering and you must say that this is Tishri and the text calls it seventh, but cannot I say that it is Marheshman and by seventh is meant the seventh to or we require gathering in and this we have not in Marheshman, but cannot I say that it is Elul and by seventh is meant seventh to Adar we require the bulk of the gathering which we have not in Elul, but does the text say the bulk of the gathering? The fact is said Rabbana that we cannot learn this from the Torah of Moses our teacher, but we have to learn it from the later scriptures is upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Shabbat Rabbi Ola said we learn it from here. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tabith Arkahana said we learn it from. Here in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Kislev, our Ahabi Jacob said, We learn it from here. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month, which is the month of Sivan. Our Ashi said, We learn it from here. They cast per that is a lot before him, and from day to day, and from month to month to the twelfth month, which is the month of Dar. If you prefer, I can learn it from here in the first month, which is the month of Nisan. Why did not all the others derive it from here, perhaps? First year means first in relation to his Haman's affair. Why did not Artana reckon the first of Nisan as the new year for months? Artana speaks only of years. He does not speak of months for leap years. Do we reckon a new year for leap years from Nisan? Has it not been taught a leap year is not decreed before new year, and if such a decree is issued, it is not effective in cases of emergency. However, the decree may be issued immediately after new year, and even so, the intercalary month. Must be the second Adar Arnam and B. Isaac replied what is meant here by leap years the closing of a leap year as we have learned is testified that the year may be declared a leap year throughout the whole of Adar since others asserted that this could be done only until Purim what was the reason of those who held that this could be done only until Purim since a master has stated that inquiries are made regarding the laws of Passover for 30 days before Passover people might be let into. Neglecting the rules of leaven what says the other to this he says that people know that a leap year depends on calculation and they say to themselves that the rabbis have only now got the calculation right what of Artana he speaks only of commencements not of terminations and for the offering of Shechalim how do we know this from scripture Our Josiah said the scripture says this is the burnt offering of each month in its month throughout the months of the year the Torah here enjoins renew. The year and bring an offering from the new contributions that the year here commences with Nisan is learned by analogy with the text it is the first to you of the months of the year but why not suppose it is Tishri from the analogy of from the beginning of the year to a year with which months are mentioned we apply the analogy of a year with which months are mentioned but to a year with which months are mentioned we do not apply the analogy of a year with which months are not mentioned Rab. Judah said in the name of Samuel it is proper to bring the congregational sacrifices that are offered on the first of Nisan from the new contributions if however they are brought from the old the duty has been performed but not in the most appropriate manner it has been taught to the same effect it is proper to bring the congregational sacrifices which are offered on the first of Nisan from the new contributions if however they were brought from the old the duty has been performed but not in the most appropriate manner if a private person has offered them from his own property they are unexceptionable provided he hands them over to the congregation surely this is self-evident you might think that we should have some scruples in accepting them in case Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah B. he has not transferred them with all his heart we are told therefore that this is not necessary why does Artana not reckon New Year for Shechalim since it is laid down that if the sacrifices are brought from the old contributions the duty is still performed he was not certain whether this should be counted in New Year some say also for the renting of houses our rabbis have taught if a man lets a house to another for a year he reckons it as 12 months from day to day if however he stipulates for this year then even if the tenant only entered into occupation on the first of Adar as soon as the first of Nisan arrives a year has been completed and even according to those who say that one day in the year is reckoned as a year this does not apply here because a man would not trouble to rent a house for less than 30 days but why should I not say that Tishri is a new year for letting houses it is taken for granted that when a man takes a house in Tishri he takes it for the whole of the rainy season why do the first tana of the Beritha and Artana not reckon the renting of houses in this and also there is often cloudy weather on the first of Elul is new year. For the tithe of cattle who is the authority for this it is Armeir as it has been taught Armeir says on the first of Elul is new year for the tithe of cattle who is the authority in respect of festivals it is Arsimian now look at the succeeding clause Arleazer and Arsimian say on the first of Tishri am I to say that the first and third statements here follow the authority of Arsimian and the middle one that of Armeir Joseph said the authority here is Rabbi and he decides now in Accordance with one now with another Tana in respect of festivals he concurs with Arsimian and in respect of tithe of cattle he concurs with Armeir if that is so how can he say for New Year's there are five Rob replied there are four according to all authorities there are four according to Armeir excluding the festivals and four according to Arsimian excluding the tithe of cattle Arnam and B. Isaac said the meaning of our mission is there are four months in which there are a number of new years an objection was raised the sixteenth of Nisan is the new year for the Omer the sixth of seven is the new year for the two loaves now this being so according to Rob the mission should say six and according to Arnam and B. Isaac five our Papa said in fixing the number the Tana reckons only such New Year's as commence with the evening he does not reckon those that do not commence with the evening but what of festivals which in respect of vows do not commence with the evening and yet are reckoned since he has to bring his vow he becomes guilty of delaying from the very commencement of the festival but what of jubilees which do not commence with the evening and yet are reckoned in this follows the view of our Yohanan B. Ishmael the son of our Yohanan B. Baraka who said that the jubilee commences with the new year Arshisha
This refers to the late ones whose conception takes place in Nisan, but how then does the other Aliezer account for the words of valleys are covered with corn? That refers to the early ones whose conception takes place in Adar. Now, according to our Meir, there is no difficulty. The text says the ram's mouth, the sheep to wit, at the time when the valleys are covered with corn, but there are some also which do not conceive till they shout aloud and sing, but on the view of our Aliezer and our Simeon, it clauses should be reversed, thus the ram's mouth, the sheep to wit, at the time when the ears of corn shout for joy and sing, but there are some which do so already when the valleys are covered with corn. The fact is said, Robert, that all authorities hold that the ram's mouth, the sheep, at the time when the valleys are covered with corn, which is in Adar, but where they differ is in the exposition of the following text, Biz, thou shalt surely tithe in regard to which we have learned that the scripture. Speaks of two tithes, the tithe of cattle and the tithe of corn. Now our mayor was of opinion that the tithe of cattle is put on the same footing as the tithe of corn in this way, just as corn becomes liable to tithe soon after it reaches completion, so cattle becomes liable to tithe soon after it reaches completion. Our Eliezer and our Simeon again held that the tithe of cattle is put on the same footing as the tithe of corn in this way, just as the new year for the tithe of corn is in Tishri, so the new year for the tithe of cattle is in Tishri. On the first of Tishri is new year for years. What legal bearing has this our Papa said for determining the validity of documents as we have learned bonds if antedated are invalid, but if postdated are valid, but we have learned on the first of Nisan is new year for kings, and we asked what is the legal bearing of this and our Hista replied for determining the validity of documents. There is no contradiction. The one statement refers to kings of Israel. Other to kings of other nations, what then of the dictum of Arhista? This statement refers only to the kings of Israel, but for the kings of other nations, we reckon from Tishri was Arhista telling us only something that we already know from a mission. No, Arhista wanted to tell us the import of some scriptural verses. If you like, I can say that Arhista explains the mission here in the same way as Arzara, since Arzara said that it means for reckoning cycles in this following the view of our Eliezer, who said that the world was created in Tishri. Arnam and B. Isaac explained the mission to refer to the divine judgment as it is written from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, which means from the beginning of the year sentence is passed as to what shall be up to the end of it. How do we know that this takes place in Tishri? Because it is written, blow the horn at the new moon at the covered time, Keze, for our feast day, which is the feast Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, on which the Moon is covered over myth you must say that this is New Year and it is written in this connection for it is a statute for Israel and ordinance for the God of Jacob. Our rabbis taught for it is a statute for Israel and ordinance for the God of Jacob. This teaches that the heavenly Beth Din does not assemble for judgment until the Beth Din on earth has sanctified the month. Another buried the taught for it is a statute for Israel. This tells me only that Israel are judged. How do I know that? This applies also to the other nations of this world because it is written an ordinance for the God of Jacob. If that is the case, what is the point of saying for it is a statute for Israel? It teaches that Israel are brought up for trial first, and this is in harmony with the following saying of our Hista for our Hista said where a king and a community appear together, the king is brought up for judgment first, as it says the judgment of his servant Solomon and the judgment of his people. What is? The reason if you like I can say because it is not seemly that the king should stand outside and if you like I can say the king is tried before the divine wrath becomes really fierce for release years how do we know this from the scripture because it is written and in the seventh year shall be a sabbath of solemn rest for the land and that this commences with Tishri we learn from the analogy with the word year in from the beginning of the year but let us learn that it is Nisan from analogy with the word year in the text it is the first to you of the months of the year we draw an analogy to a year with which months are not mentioned from a year with which months are not mentioned but we do not draw an analogy to a year with which months are not mentioned from a year with which months are mentioned and for jubilee years is the new year for jubilees on the first of Tishri surely the new year for jubilees is on the tenth of Tishri as it is written on the day of atonement. Shall you make proclamation with the horn? What authority is here followed? Our Ishmael, the son of our Yohanan, be as it has been taught, and ye shall hallow the fiftieth year. What is the point of these words? It is this, since it says on the day of atonement, ye shall make proclamation. I might think that the year is sanctified only from the day of atonement onwards. Therefore, it says, and ye shall sanctify the fiftieth year. This teaches that it is sanctified from its inception on this ground. Our Ishmael, the son of our Yohanan, be laid down that from New Year to the day of atonement, slaves were neither dismissed to their homes nor subjected to their masters, but they ate and drank and made merry wearing garlands on their heads. When the day of atonement came, the Beth Din sounded the horn. Slaves were dismissed to their homes and fields returned to their original owners. And the rabbis, what do they make of this verse? They say it teaches that you are to sanctify years, but not months. Another berry that taught it is a jubilee. What is the point of these words? Since it says, and ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, I might think that just as it is sanctified from its inception onward, so it remains sanctified for a time after its termination, and there would be nothing to wonder at in the seeing that we regularly add from the profane onto the holy. Therefore, it says it is a jubilee to you the fiftieth year to show that you are to sanctify the fiftieth year, but not the fifty. First year Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, and the rabbis, what do they make of these words? They say you are to count the fiftieth year, but you are not to count the fifty-first to exclude the view of our Judah who said that the fiftieth year is reckoned both ways. We are here told that this is not so, and how do we know from the scripture that we add from the profane onto the holy as it has been taught in plowing time and in harvest time? Thou shalt rest our Akiva commenting on this said there. Was no need for scripture to specify the plowing and harvest of the sabbatical year since this has already been mentioned in thy field thou shalt not so etc. What must be meant therefore is the plowing of the year before the seventh which is passing into the seventh and the harvest of the seventh year which is continuing into the period after the seventh year. Our Ishmael said just as plowing is optional so the harvest year referred to is an optional one excluding the harvesting of it. Omer which is a religious duty once then does our Ishmael derive the rule that an addition is to be made from the profane onto the holy from what has been taught and ye shall afflict your souls on the ninth day I might think literally on the ninth day it therefore says in the evening if in the evening I might think after dark it therefore says or the ninth day what then am I to understand that we begin fasting while it is yet day which shows that we add from the profane onto the holy. Know this so far only in regard to the inception of the holy day. How do I know it in regard to its termination? Because it says from evening to evening. So far I have brought only the day of atonement under the rule. How do I know that it applies to Sabbaths? Also because it says ye shall rest. How do I know that it applies to festivals? Because it says your Sabbath. How am I to understand this? That wherever there is an obligation to rest, we add from the profane unto the holy. What then does our Akiba make of this? And ye shall afflict your souls on the ninth day. He requires it for the lesson learned by our high rab from fifty. For our high rab from fifty learned. And ye shall afflict your souls on the ninth day. Do we then fast on the ninth day? Is it not on the tenth day that we fast? We do. But the use of this word indicates that if a man eats and drinks on the ninth day, the scripture accounts it to him. Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, as if he fasted on both the ninth and the tenth days. Our rabbis taught it is a jubilee, a jubilee, even though they did not observe the release of fields, even though they did not observe the blowing of the trumpet. I might say that it is still a jubilee, even though they did not observe the dismissal of slaves. Therefore, it says it is so. Our Judah, our Jose said it is a jubilee, a jubilee, even though they did not release fields, even though they did not dismiss slaves. I might think that it is still a jubilee, even if they did not blow the trumpet. It therefore says it is now, since one text brings some cases under the rule and another text excludes others from it. Why should I expound a jubilee, even though they did not dismiss? But it is not a jubilee unless they blew the trumpet, because it is possible that there should be no opportunity for dismissing slaves. But it is not possible that there should be no opportunity for blowing the trumpet. Another explanation is that the performance of the latter depends on the Beth Din, but the Performance of the former does not depend on the Beth Din. What need is there for the alternative explanation? Because you might argue that it is impossible that there should not be someone in some part of the world who has not a slave to dismiss. Theref
Months of the year we draw an analogy to a year with which months are not mentioned from a year with which months are not mentioned but we do not draw an analogy to a year with which months are not mentioned from a year with which months are mentioned our rabbis taught if one plants or bends over or grafts a tree in the year before the sabbatical year 30 days before new year in all three cases by new year a year has passed for him and he can preserve the growth during the seventh year. If he does so less than 30 days before new year the interval up to new year does not count as a year for him and he may not preserve the growth in the sabbatical year Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah the fruit of such a plantation is forbidden until the 15th of Shabbat whether as uncircumcised in the year of uncircumcision or as fourth year fruit in the fourth year what is the ground for this ruling our high B Abba said in the name of our Yohan and though some trace it back to the authority of our Jan scripture says and in the fourth year and in the fifth year there are occasions when fruit appears in the fourth year and it is still forbidden on account of uncircumcision and there are occasions when fruit appears in the fifth year and it is still forbidden on account of fourth year shall I say that that is not in agreement with our Meir since our Meir has affirmed that one day in the year is reckoned as a year as it has been taught PAR bullock is mentioned in the Torah without further qualification and means an animal 24 months and one day old so our Meir our Eliezer says it means an animal 24 months and 30 days old for our Meir used to say wherever eagle calf is mentioned in the Torah without further qualification it means of the first year eagle ben baker young ox means of the second year PAR bullock means of the third year you may still say it is in agreement with our Meir when our Meir said that one day in a year is counted as a Year he meant at the end of the period but not at the beginning Rabbi said cannot we apply here an argument of Forshio Raju would seem that in the case of Anita though the beginning of the seventh day is not reckoned as concluding her period the end of the first day yet counts for the beginning of her period in the case of a period of years where one day is counted as a whole year at the end Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah B does it not follow that one day should be counted as a year at the beginning what then will you say that the passage quoted follows our Eliezer how can this be seen that our Eliezer requires 30 days and 30 days as we have learned it is not allowed to plant nor to bend over nor to graft in the year before the sabbatical year less than 30 days before new year and if one did plant or bend over or graft he must uproot the plant so our Eliezer our Judah said if a grafting does not take within three days it will not take at all our Jose and our Simeon said that it takes two weeks and commenting on this our said in the name of Rabbi Abba on the view that 30 days are the period for taking we require 30 days and 30 on the view that 3 days are the period 33 days are required on the view that 2 weeks are the period 2 weeks and 30 days are required now even if we accept the view of our Judah 33 days are required the truth is that the statement in question follows our Meir and when it says 30 days it means the 30 days of taking in that case it should say 31 days he held that the 30th day counts both ways our Yohan and said both of them are Meir and our Eliezer based their views on the same verses and it came to pass in the 1 and 600th year in the first month on the first day of the month our Meir reason seeing that the year was only one day old and it is still called a year we can conclude that one day in a year is reckoned as a year what says it other to this he says that if it were written in the 601st year then it would be as you say seeing however that it is written in the 1 and 600th year the word year refers to 600 and as for the word 1 this means the beginning of 1 and what is our Eliezer's reason because it is written in the first month on the first day of the month seeing that the month was only one day old and it is yet called month we can conclude that one day in a month is reckoned as a month and since one day in a month is reckoned as a month 30 days in a year are reckoned as a year a month being reckoned by its unit and a year by its unit we infer from what has just been said that both our Meir and our Eliezer were of opinion that the world was created in this and it has been taught our Eliezer says in Tishri the world was created in Tishri the patriarchs were born in Tishri the patriarchs died on Passover Isaac was born on New Year Sarah Rachel and Hannah were visited on New Year Joseph went forth from prison Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah on New Year the bondage of our ancestors in Egypt ceased in Nisan they were redeemed and in Nisan they will be redeemed in the time to come our Joshua says in Nisan the world was created in Nisan the patriarchs were born in Nisan the patriarchs died on Passover Isaac was born on New Year Sarah Rachel and Hannah were visited on New Year Joseph went forth from prison on New Year the bondage of our ancestors ceased in Egypt and in Nisan they will be redeemed in time to come it has been taught our Eliezer says whence do we know that the world was created in Tishri because it says and God said let the earth put forth grass herb yielding seed and fruit tree which is the month in which the earth puts forth grass and the trees are full of fruit you must say that this is Tishri that time was the season of rainfall and the rain came down and the plants sprouted as it says and a mist went up from the earth our Joshua says whence do we Know that the world was created in this and because it says and the earth brought forth grass or yielding seed after its kind and tree bearing fruit which is the month in which the earth is full of grass and trees begin to produce fruit you must say that this is nissan that time was the period when cattle beasts and fowls copulate with one another as it says the rains have mounted the sheep etc and how does the other explain the text tree bearing fruit this signifies a blessing for future generations and what does the other make of the words fruit tree this is to be explained in accordance with the dictum of our Joshua B. Levi for our Joshua B. Levi said all creatures of the creation were brought into being with their full stature their full capacities and their full beauty as it says and the heaven and the earth were finished and all the host of them Zebam read not Zebam but Zebam their beauty our Eliezer said whence do we know that the patriarchs were born in Tishri? Because it says, and all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month Ethanim, that is the month in which the mighty ones Ethanim of the world were born. How do you know that this word Ethan means mighty? Because it is written, Thy dwelling place is firm, Ethan, and it also says here, Ye mountains, the Lord's controversy, and Ye mighty rocks Ethanim, the foundations of the earth. It also says, The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains. Skipping upon the hills, where leaping upon the mountains means for the merit of the patriarchs, and skipping upon the hills means for the merit of the matriarchs. Our Joshua said, Whence do we know that the patriarchs were born in this? And because it says, And it came to pass in the four hundred and eightieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year in the month of Ziv, that is the month in which the brilliant ones Ziv of the world were born. But how does he explain the expression month of Ethanim? It means the month which is strong in religious duties. What does the other make of the expression in the month of Ziv? It means the month in which there is splendor for the trees. For so Rab Judah has said, when a man goes abroad in the days of Nisan and sees trees blossoming, he should say, Blessed is he that hath not left his world short of anything and has created therein goodly creatures and goodly trees to rejoice mankind. He who holds that they were born in Nisan holds that they died in Nisan, and he who holds that they were born in Tishri holds that they died in Tishri. As it says, I am 120 years old this day. The word this day seems here superfluous. What then is the point of it? As much as to say, this day my days and years have reached full measure, which teaches that the Holy One blessed be he sits and completes the years of the righteous from day to day and from month to month. As it says, the number of thy Days I will fulfill whence do we know that Isaac was born on Passover because it is written on the next festival I will return unto thee now when was he the angel speaking shall I say he was speaking on Passover and referring to Pentecost could she bear in fifty days shall I say then that he was speaking on Pentecost and was referring to Tishri even in five months could she bear I must suppose then that he was speaking on Tabernacles and referring to Passover even so could she bear in six months it has been taught that that year was a leap year all the same if the master deducts the days of uncleanness the time is too short Marzitra replied even those who hold that when a woman bears at nine months she does not give birth before the month is complete admit that if she bears at seven months she can give birth before the month is complete as it says and it came to pass after the cycle of days the minimum of cycles is two and the minimum of days is two on New Year's era. Rachel and Hannah were visited. Whence do we know this? Our Eliezer said, We learn it from the two occurrences of the word visiting and the two occurrences of the word remembering. It is written concerning Rachel and God remembered Rachel, and it is written concerning Hannah and the Lord remembered her. And there is an analogous mention of remembering in conn
Day was the seventeenth day of year when the constellation of Pleiades sets at daybreak and the fountains begin to dry up and because they mankind perverted their ways the Holy One blessed be he changed for them the work of creation and made the constellation of Pleiades rise at daybreak and took two stars from the Pleiades and brought a flood on the world our Eliezer said that day was the seventeenth of Marheshva the day on which the constellation of Pleiades rises at daybreak and the season. When the fountains begin to fill Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah and because they perverted their ways the Holy One blessed be he changed for them the work of creation and caused the constellation of Pleiades to rise at daybreak and took away two stars from it and brought a flood on the world now accepting the view of our Joshua we can understand why the word second is used but on our Eliezer's view what is meant by second it means the second to the day of judgment again on our Joshua's view we See what change there was in the work of creation but on our Eliezer's view what change was there the answer is found in the dictum of our Histah for our Histah said with hot liquid they sinned and with hot liquid they were punished with hot liquid they sinned namely in sexual transgression with hot liquid they were punished it is written here and the waters assuaged and it is written elsewhere and the wrath of the king was assuaged our rabbis taught the wise men of Israel follow our Eliezer in dating the flood and our Joshua in dating the annual cycles while the scholars of other peoples follow our Joshua in dating the flood also and for vegetables a taught for vegetables and for tithes and for vows what is meant by vegetables the tithe of vegetables but this is the same as tithes the mentions first a tithe prescribed by the rabbis and then those prescribed by the Torah but let him mention those prescribed by the Torah first since he was specially pleased with the others. He mentions them first and our Tana why does he not mention tithes he mentions a tithe prescribed by the rabbis and leaves us to infer a fortiori those prescribed by the Torah why does not the Tana here say simply tithe in the singular he desires to include both the tithe of cattle and the tithe of cereals and why does he not say vegetable in the singular he refers to two kinds of vegetables as we have learned tithe is to be given from vegetables which are commonly made up into bundles from the time they are so made up and from those which are not commonly so made up from the time when he fills a vessel with them our rabbis taught if one gathered herbs on the eve of new year before sunset and then gathered some more Talmud Mas Rosh Hashanah be after sunset Terima and tithe are not given from one lot for another because Terima and tithe are not given from the new for the old nor from the old for the new if it was at the meeting point of the second and third years of the septennial cycle from that which is plucked in the second year first and second tithe have to be given and from that which was plucked in the third year first tithe and the tithe of the poor once this rule our Joshua believe I says it is written when thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithe of thine increase in the third year which is the year of the tithe this means the year in which there is only one tithe how is then one to act he gives the first tithe and the tithe of it poor and the second tithe is omitted is this correct or should the first tithe also be omitted not so because it says moreover thou shalt speak unto the levites and say unto them when ye take of the children of Israel the tithe which I have given you from them for your inheritance the text here compares the tithe of the levites to an inheritance to signify that just as an inheritance is to be held uninterruptedly so their tithe is to be given without interruption it has been taught to the same effect when thou hast made an end of tithing etc. This means a year in which there is only one tithe how is one to act he gives first tithe and tithe of the poor and the second tithe is omitted should perhaps the first tithe also be omitted not so because it says and the Levite shall come which means to say every time he comes give him so our Judah our Eliezer B. Jacob says we have no need to appeal to this text it says moreover thou shalt speak unto the Levites and say unto them. When ye take from the children of Israel the tithe which I have given you from them for your inheritance the text here compares the tithe to an inheritance to signify that just as an inheritance is held uninterruptedly so the tithe is to be given without interruption and for vows our rabbis taught if one is interdicted by vows to have no benefit from another person for a year he reckons twelve months from day to day if he said for this year then even if he made the vow on the twenty ninth of Elul as soon as the first of Tishri arrives a year is completed for him and this even on the view of those who say that one day in a year is not counted as a year for he undertook to mortify himself and he has mortified himself but why not say that his year ends in this in respect of vows follow the ordinary use of language we have learned elsewhere Fenugrek becomes liable to tithe from the time when it grows produce and olives from the time when they have grown a third what is meant by from the time when it grows from the time when it grows sufficiently for sowing produce and olives from the time when they are a third grown once this rule R.C. said in the name of Aryohan and some trace it back to the name of our Jose the Galilean scripture says at the end of every seven years in the set time of the year of release in the Feast of Tabernacles now how comes the year of release to be mentioned here the Feast of Tabernacles is already the eighth year it is in fact too intimate to us that if produce has grown a third in the seventh year before new year the rules of the seventh year are to be applied to it in the eighth year said our zera to our sea talmud mas rosh hashanah but perhaps even though it has not begun to ripen at all the all merciful has still laid down that it is to be left alone until the feast of tabernacles do not imagine such a thing for it is written and the feast of ingathering as if at the end of the year now what is ingathering shall i say it means the feast which comes at the time of ingathering this is already signified in the words when thou gatherest in what then must be meant here by as if harvesting and the rabbis take it for granted that all produce which is harvested by tabernacles must have grown to a third by new year and scripture applies to it the words at the end of the year said our jeremiah to our zera and were the rabbis certain that there is this distinction between a third and less than a third he replied to him am i not always telling you not to let yourself go beyond the established rule all the measurements laid down by the sages are of this nature in 40 seahs of water a ritual bath may be taken in 40 seahs lesser tube it may not be taken a quantity of food equal to the size of an egg can be rendered unclean as food stuff if it is short of that quantity by grain it cannot be rendered unclean a piece of cloth three handbreadths by three can be rendered unclean by being trodden on less then this quantity by one hair is not so rendered unclean our jeremiah subsequently said what i said is of no account for our kahana was asked by members of the college once did the israelites bring the omer which they offered on their entry into the land of israel if you say it grew while still in the possession of the heathen this cannot be since the all merciful prescribed your harvest and not the harvest of the stranger but how do we know that the israelites offered it at all Perhaps they did not offer it at all. Do not imagine such a thing, for it is written, and they did eat of the produce of the land on the morrow after the Passover. On the morrow after the Passover, they ate, but not before, which shows that they brought the omer and only then ate. Once then did they obtain it. Here, Kahana replied to them, all that had not grown to a third while in the possession of the stranger was fitting for their use. Now it might be argued here also that perhaps it had grown in the possession of the stranger, and they were not certain. The fact, however, that they ate it shows that they were certain. So here, the rabbis are certain, but perhaps the Israelites brought the omer from corn which had not commenced to grow when they entered the land, but where it had grown to a quarter, they were not certain about the difference between a third and less than a third. Do not imagine such a thing, for it is written, and the people went up from the Jordan on the tenth of the month now if you assume that by then the corn had not grown at all could it become ripe in five days but on your assumption that it had grown to a fourth or a fifth could such corn become ripe in five days what you consequently have to answer even on this assumption is that the land of Canaan is called the land of the hind so on the other assumption you can answer that it is called the land of the hind our Hannah objected strongly to the statement made above can you he said maintain that this is if is harvesting seeing that it is written when thou gatherest in from thy threshing floor and from thy wine press and commenting on this a master has said the verse speaks of the waste of the threshing floor and the wine press said our Zara, I thought I was sure of this and now our Hannah has come and put a spoke in my will how then do we know this rule about a third as it has been taught our Jonathan B. Joseph says and it shall bring forth produce for the three years Talmud Moss. Rosh Hashanah be read not Lishlash or three but Lishlash to a third but this text is required for its literal meaning it is written in another verse and ye shall sow for the eighth year and eat of the produce the old store until the ninth year we have learned elsewhere rise millet and sesame if they have taken root by new year are for purposes of tithe counted as belonging to the year before the
To manage he collects the whole crop in a heap so that in the end he gives Karama and tithe from the new crop in the heap for the new crop in the heap and from the old crop in the heap for the old crop in the heap he replied to him you cite Arsimian Chizuri Arsimian Chizuri held that mixing can be relied on whereas the rabbis held that mixing cannot be relied on our Isaac bin Amman he said in the name of Samuel the Halacha follows the ruling given by our Jose B. Kippur in the name of Arsimian. Chizuri Arzera strongly demurred to this did Samuel he asked really say this is not Samuel said mixing is not relied on for anything save wine and oil Arzera overlooked the following dictum of Samuel the determining factor is in all cases the full ripening Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah and all three dicta of Samuel are necessary for if he had told us only that the law follows Arsimian B. Chizuri I should have said that his reason was because we can rely on mixing he tells us therefore that mixing is not to be relied on for anything and if he had told us that mixing is not to be relied on for anything I should have said that he holds with the rabbis therefore he tells us that the Halacha follows Arsimian Chizuri if again we had only these two dicta I should have said that Samuel contradicts himself he therefore tells us that the determining factor is in all cases the full ripening and if he had told us only that the determining factor is in all cases the full ripening I should have said that this applies also to produce and olives therefore he tells us that the Halacha follows Arsimian Chizuri where he expresses a different view but if so let him indicate only these two points why does he tell us that mixing is not in all cases to be relied on his object is to tell us that for wine and oil mixing is to be relied on it has been taught our Jose the Galilean says after that thou hast gathered in from thy threshing floor and from thy wine press this tells us that just as the produce brought to the threshing floor and the wine press have this special feature that they are nurtured by the waters of the outgoing year and are consequently tithed for the outgoing year so all products which are nurtured by the waters of the outgoing year are tithed for the outgoing year this excludes vegetables which are nurtured by the waters of the current year and are consequently tithed for the current year are akiba said after that thou hast gathered it from thy Threshing floor and thy wine press just as the products brought to the threshing floor and wine press have this special feature that they are nurtured by rainwater and consequently are tied for the outgoing year so all products that are nurtured by rainwater are tied for the outgoing year this excludes vegetables which are nurtured by all kinds of water and are consequently tied for the current year where do they are Jose and Arakiba differ in practice are about said they take different views with regard to seedless onions and Egyptian beans as we have learned seedless onions and Egyptian beans which have been kept without water for 30 days before New Year and are gathered after New Year are tied for the outgoing year and are permitted in the sabbatical year otherwise they are forbidden in the sabbatical year and are tied for the current year on the first of Shabbat is New Year for trees what is the reason our Eliezer said in the name of our Ashai because by then the greater part of the year's rain has fallen and the greater part of the cycle is still to come what is the sense of this what it means is this although the greater part of the cycle is still to come yet since the greater part of the year's rain has fallen therefore etc our rabbis taught it is recorded of our Akiva that he once plucked a citron tree on the first of Shabbat and gave two tithes from Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah B and one in accordance with the ruling of Beth Shammai and one in accordance with the ruling of Beth Hillel our Jose B. Judah said he did not follow the two rulings of Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel but the two rulings of Rabban Gamaliel and our Eliezer as we have learned a citron tree follows the rule of a tree in three respects and of a vegetable in one respect it follows the rule of a tree in three respects for uncircumcision for fourth year fruit and for the sabbatical year it follows the rule of a vegetable in one respect its tithe year being determined. By its plucking, so Rabban Gamaliel our Eliezer, however, says that a citron follows the rule of a tree in all respects, but is it right to adopt the harder rule from both sides? Has it not been taught as a general principle? The Halacha follows Beth Hillel. If one prefers, however, to adopt the rule of Beth Shammai, he may do so, and if he desires to adopt the rule of Beth Hillel, he may do so. One, however, who adopts the more lenient rulings of both Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel on the same subject is a bad man, while to one who adopts the more stringent rulings of both Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel may be applied the verse, but the fool walketh in darkness. No, either one must follow Beth Shammai, both where they are more severe and more lenient, or Beth Hillel, both where they are more severe and more lenient. The answer is that our Akiba was doubtful about the tradition and did not know whether Beth Hillel fixed the new year for trees on the first of Shabbat or on the fifteenth of Shabbat. Our Hosebi. Judah said he did not adopt the two rulings of Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel but of Rabban Gamaliel and Arelizer but would our Jose hold that in respect of the first of Shabbat he adopted the ruling of Beth Shammai or Hanani or some say our Hanani said the case here is one of a citron which had blossomed before the 15th of Shabbat of the previous year and our Akiba might equally well have done the same thing at all earlier date but this happened to be the actual date Rabban said combined it. Two statements it was not the first of Shabbat but the 15th of Shabbat and here Akiba did not adopt the two rulings of Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel but of Rabban Gamaliel and Arelizer Rabban son of Arhuna said seeing that Rabban Gamaliel has said that the tithe year of a citron tree is determined by its plucking like that of a vegetable its new year like that of a vegetable must be the first of Tishri the following was cited in objection to this Arsimian B. Eliezer says if a man plucked the fruit of a citron tree on the eve of the 15th of Shabbat before sunset and then pluck some more after sunset terima and tithe must not be given from one lot for the other because terima and tithe are not given from the new for the old nor from the old for the new if it was at the meeting point of the third and fourth years from the fruit of the third year he gives first tithe and the tithe of the poor and from the fruit of the fourth year the first tithe and the second tithe. Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah now which authority is reported to make plucking the determining factor Rabban Gamaliel and he says here Shabbat the statement should have been reported differently thus Rabbi Barhuna said although Rabban Gamaliel said that the tithe year of a citron tree is determined by its plucking like that of a vegetable yet its new year is Shabbat why in the former statement is the expression used if it was a meeting point of the second and third years and in this. Statement the expression if it was a meeting point of the third and fourth years this points out to us incidentally that the citron tree suffers from being handled and since everybody handles it in the seventh year it does not yield fruit till the third year after blossoming are Yohanan inquired of Arjane when is the new year of the citron tree he replied in Shabbat do you mean he asked further Shabbat of the calendar or Shabbat of the cycle he replied Shabbat of the calendar Rabbi inquired of Arnaman or according to others are Yohanan inquired of Arjane suppose it was a leap year what is the rule he replied do as in ordinary years Rabbi said a citron tree which has blossomed in the sixth year and ripened in the seventh is not liable to tithe and not liable to clearance while one which has blossomed in the seventh year and produced fruit in the eighth is not liable to tithe but is liable to clearance said to him your second clause is unobjectionable because you can say that you take the more stringent view but your first clause surely involves a contradiction for you say it is not liable to clearance why so because we say make the blossoming the determining factor but if so it should surely be liable to tithe he replied to him everybody handles it and you say it should be liable to tithe our hamana however said a citron tree which blossoms in the sixth year and ripens in the seventh is always reckoned as belonging to the sixth and one which blossoms in the seventh and ripens in the eighth is always regarded as belonging to the seventh the following was cited in objection Arsimian B. Judah said in the name of Arsimian a citron tree which blossoms in the sixth year and ripens in the seventh is not liable to tithe and not liable to clearance since no fruit is liable to tithe which has not both grown and been plucked in a period of liability a citron tree which blossoms in the seventh year and ripens in the eighth year is not liable either to Tithe or to clearance since no fruit is liable to clearance which has not both grown and been plucked in the seventh year. Now the first part of the statement seems to contradict our Hamana and the second part both Rabbah and our Hamana. There is a difference of ten name on this point as it has been taught our Jose said Abdul must testified in the name of five elders that a citron is determined by its plucking in the matter of tithe. Our teachers however took a vote in Isha and decided that it is
Fifteenth of Shabbat are tithed for the incoming year Aryohanan said in regard to carob trees it has become the general custom to follow the rule of Arniyamai Resh Lakish sought to confute Aryohanan from the following as regards wild fig trees their seventh year is the second year of the septenate because after blossoming their fruit takes three years to grow he made no answer said our Abba the priest to our Jose why did he make no answer he could have said to him I give the view of R. Nehemiah and you bring against me the view of the rabbis he could not have answered him thus because Resh Lakish could have retorted do you abandon the rabbis and follow our Nehemiah but he could have said to him I speak to you of the general custom and you speak to me of a prohibition he could not answer thus because he could have said to him where a prohibition applies even if there is a general custom do we allow it but he could have said to him I speak to you of the tithe of carobs which is rabbinical and you speak to me of the sabbatical year which is pentacle the truth is said our Abba the priest I wonder whether Resh Lakish put this question whether he put this question but we are distinctly told that he did so what our Abba should say is whether he or you had admitted the difficulty or not Talmud Mas Rosh Hashanah Mishnah at four seasons divine judgment is passed on the world at Passover in respect of produce at Pentecost in respect of fruit at New Year all. Creatures pass before him God like children of Marin as it says he that fashioneth the heart of them all that considereth all their doings and on tabernacles judgment is passed in respect of rain tomorrow which produce is referred to shall I say the produce which is already grown if so then when were the hardships decreed which it has already suffered it must be then the produce which is to be sown later you assume then that only one judgment is passed but it has been taught if some calamity or misfortune happens to produce before Passover it is in virtue of a judgment passed on the previous Passover if after Passover of a judgment passed at the Passover which has just gone if a calamity or misfortune happens to a man before the day of atonement it is in virtue of a judgment passed on the last day of atonement if just after the day of atonement of a judgment passed on the one just gone robber replied this shows that two judgments are passed on the produce of a remark therefore if a Man sees that the slow maturing seed is doing well, he should sow the quick maturing seed in good time so that it may be well grown before the time comes to judge it. Our Mishnah seems to agree neither with our Meir nor with our Judah nor with our Jose nor with our Nathan, for it has been taught all are judged on New Year and their doom is sealed on the day or atonement. So our Meir, our Judah says all are judged on New Year and the separate dooms are sealed each in its time on Passover in respect of produce. On Pentecost, in respect of fruit, on tabernacles, judgment is passed in respect of rain and man is judged on New Year and his doom is sealed on the day of atonement. Our Jose says man is judged every day as it says and thou dost visit him every morning. Our Nathan says man is judged every moment as it says thou dost try him every moment. Should you maintain that it is after all in accordance with Rabbi Judah the seasons mentioned in our mission referring to the final doom, we may retort that if so. There is a difficulty with the case of man robber replied this tana of our mission follows the tana of the school of our Ishmael since it has been taught in the school of our Ishmael at four seasons judgment is passed on the world on Passover in respect of produce on Pentecost in respect of fruit on tabernacles judgment is passed in respect of rain and man is judged on New Year and his doom is sealed on the day of atonement the statements of the mission must then be taken to refer to the preliminary judgment our Hista said what is the reason of our Jose how can you ask this surely it is as he has stated visit text and thou dost visit him every morning what we mean is this what is his reason for not taking the same view as our Nathan trying merely means scrutinizing but visiting also merely means scrutinizing the truth is said our Hista that our Jose's reason is to be found in this text to do the judgment of his servant and the judgment of his people Israel as every day shall Require Arista further said if a king and a people present themselves together the king stands his trial first as it says to do the judgment of his servant and the judgment of his people Israel what is the reason if you like I can say because it is not proper that a king should remain outside or if you like I can say so that he may be judged before the divine anger waxes hot our Joseph said whose authority do we follow nowadays in praying daily for the sick and for the ailing whose authority that of our Jose or if you like I can say that it is after all that of the rabbis but that at the same time we follow the counsel of our Isaac for our Isaac said supplication is good for a man whether before the doom is pronounced or after it is pronounced it has been taught our Judah said in the name of our Akiba why did the Torah enjoin on us to offer an omer on Passover because Passover is the season of produce therefore the Holy One blessed be he said bring before me an omer on Passover so that your produce in the fields may be blessed. Why did the Torah enjoin on us to bring two leaves on Pentecost? Because Pentecost is the season for fruit of the tree. Therefore, the Holy One blessed be. He said, Bring before me two loaves on Pentecost, so that the fruit of your trees may be blessed. Why did the Torah enjoin on us to pour out water on Tabernacles? The Holy One blessed be. He said, Pour out water before me on Tabernacles, so that your rains this year may be blessed. Also, recite before me on New Year text, making mention of kingship, remembrance, and the shofar kingship, so that you may proclaim the king over your remembrance, so that your remembrance may rise favorably before me. And through what through the shofar Arabab said, Why do we blow on a ram's horn? The Holy One blessed be. He said, Sound before me a ram's horn, so that I may remember on your behalf the binding of Isaac the son of Abraham, and account it to you as if you had bound yourselves before me. Or Isaac said, Why do we? Sound the horn on New Year you ask why do we sound the all merciful has told us to sound what he means is why do we sound the terror you ask why do we sound the terror the all merciful has proclaimed a memorial of terror what he means is why do we sound the tekiah and terror sitting Talmud Mas Rosh Hashanah B and then again sound the tekiah and terror standing it is so as to confuse the accuser our Isaac further said if the shofar is not sounded at the beginning of the year evil will befall at the end of it why so because the accuser has not been confused our Isaac further said every year which is poor at its opening becomes rich before it ends as it says from the beginning of the year where the word is spelt Merashith unto the end such a year is destined to have a latter end our Isaac further said man is judged only according to his actions up to the time of judgment as it says God hath heard the voice of the lad as he is there our Isaac further said three things call a man's Iniquities to mind, namely a shaky wall, the scrutinizing of prayer and calling for divine judgment on one's fellow man. For our Abin said, He who calls down divine judgment on his neighbor is himself punished first for his own sins, as it says. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee, and it is written later. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Our Isaac further said, Four things cancel the doom of a man, namely charity, supplication, change of name, and change of conduct. Charity, as it is written, and charity delivereth from death, supplication, as it is written. And they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, change of name, as it is written. As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be, and it continues, and I will bless her, and moreover, I will give thee a son of her change of conduct, as it is written. And God saw their works, and it continues, and God repented of the evil which he said. He would do unto them, and he did it not. Some say that change of place also avails, as it is written. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and it proceeds, and I will make of thee a great nation. And the other, why does he not reckon this? In that case, it was the merit of the land of Israel which availed him. Or Isaac further said, It is incumbent on a man to go to pay his respects to his teacher on festivals, as it says, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath, from which we infer that on new moon and Sabbath one ought to go. Or Isaac further said, A man should purify himself for the festival, as it says, And their carcasses ye shall not touch. It has been taught to the same effect, and their carcasses ye shall not touch. I might think that ordinary Israelites are cautioned not to touch carcasses. Therefore it says, Say unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, which shows that the sons of Aaron are cautioned, but ordinary Israelites are not cautioned. May we not then argue a fortiori seeing that in the case of a serious uncleanness while the priests are cautioned Israelites are not cautioned how much less are they likely to be cautioned in the case of a light uncleanness what then am I to make of the words and their carcasses ye shall not touch on the festival our crust but they said in the name of our Yohanan three books are opened in heaven on New Year one for the thoroughly wicked one for the thoroughly righteous and one for the intermediate. The thoroughly
down to Gehenim Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah and Skul and rise again as it says and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and I will answer them of them two hand said the Lord killeth and make the life he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up Beth Hillel however say he that abounds in grace inclines the scales towards grace and of them David said I love that the Lord should hear my voice and my supplication and on their behalf David composed the whole of the passage I was brought low and he saved me wrongdoers of Israel who sin with their body and wrongdoers of the Gentiles who sin with their body go down to Gehenim and are punished there for twelve months after twelve months their body is consumed and their soul is burnt and the wind scatters them under the solace of the feet of the righteous as it says and ye shall tread down the wicked and they shall be as Ashes under the solace of your feet, but as for the minimum and the informers and the scoffers who rejected the Torah and denied the resurrection of the dead, and those who abandoned the ways of the community, and those who spread their terror in the land of the living, and who sinned and made the masses sin like Jeroboam the son of Nebat and his fellows, these will go down to Gehenim and be punished there for all generations, as it says, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have rebelled against me, etc. Gehenim will be consumed, but they will not be consumed, as it says, and their form shall wear away the nether world. Why all this? Because they laid hands on the habitations of all, as it says, that there be no habitations of all for him, and Zebul signifies the temple, as it says, I have surely built the house of habitations of all of them, and said they that strive with the Lord shall be broken to pieces, are Isaac the Abin said, and their faces shall be black like. The sides of the pot rub added among them are the most handsome of the inhabitants of Mahuza, and they shall be called sons of Gehenim. The master said above Bethel, I'll say he that abounds in grace inclines the scales towards grace. How can this be seen that it is written, and I shall bring the third part through the fire that refers to wrongdoers of Israel who sin with their body, wrongdoers of Israel who sin with their body, but you said that there is no remedy for them, there is no remedy. For them, when their iniquities are more numerous than their good deeds, we now speak of those whose iniquities and good deeds are evenly balanced, but whose iniquities include that which is committed by sinners of Israel with their body, in that case they cannot escape the doom of I shall bring the third through the fire, but otherwise in regard to them he that is abundant in grace inclines towards grace, and of them David said, I love that the Lord should hear on this verse Robert discourse as Follows what is meant by the words I love that the Lord should hear the community of Israel exclaimed before the Holy One, Blessed be he sovereign of the universe when am I beloved in thy sight at the time when thou hearest the voice of my supplications I was brought low Delatai and he saved me although I am poor Dela in the performance of religious duties yet it is fitting to save me what is meant by wrongdoers of Israel who sin with their body rap said this refers to the cranium which does not put on the phylactery who are the wrongdoers of the Gentiles who sin with their body rap said this refers to sexual sin who have spread their terror in the land of the living who are these are his said this is a communal leader who makes himself unduly feared by the community for purposes other than religious rap Judah said in the name of rap any communal leader who makes himself unduly feared by the community for purposes other than religious will never have a scholar for a son. As it says, therefore, if men fear him, he shall not see among his sons any wise of heart. Beth Hillel say he that abounds in grace inclines the scales to grace. How does he do? Our Eliezer says he presses down the scale of merit. As it says, he will again have compassion on us. He will press down our iniquities. Our Jose Behanan says he does so by raising the scale of iniquities. As it says, raising iniquity and passing by transgression in the school of our Ishmael, they taught he puts aside every first iniquity and herein lies the attribute of grace. Rabbah said the iniquity itself is not obliterated. And if there is an excess of iniquities, God reckons it with the others. Rabbah said he who forgoes his right to exact punishment is forgiven all his iniquities. As it says, forgiving iniquity and passing by transgression, who is forgiven iniquity, one who passes by transgression against himself, or who not the son of our Joshua was once ill. Our Papa went to inquire about him. He saw that he was very. Ill and said to those present make ready provisions for his everlasting journey eventually however he or whom are recovered and our papa felt ashamed to see him he said to him what did you see in your illness he replied it was indeed as you thought but the holy one blessed be he said to them the angels because he does not insist upon his rights do not be particular with him as it says forgiving iniquity and passing by transgression who is forgiven iniquity he who passes by transgression it verse continues to the remnant of his heritage our son of our said we have here a fat tail with a thorn in it for the remnant of his inheritance but not for all his inheritance talmud mas rosh hashanah be what it means is for him who makes himself a mere remnant are who not contrasted two parts of the same verse it is written the lord is righteous in all his ways and then it is written and gracious in all his works how is this at first righteous and at the end gracious are Eliezer. Similarly contrasted two texts it is written also unto the O Lord Bell and get mercy and then it is written for thou renderest to every man according to his work how is this at first thou renderest to every man according to his work but at the end unto the O Lord Bell and get mercy ilfi or as some report ilfa similarly contrasted two texts it is written abundant in goodness and then it is written and in truth how is this at first truth and at the end abundant in goodness and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed etc our Yohanan said were it not written in the text it would be impossible for us to say such a thing this verse teaches us that the Holy One blessed be he drew his robe round him like the reader of a congregation and showed Moses the order of prayer he said to him whenever Israel sin let them carry out the service before me and I will forgive them the Lord the Lord I am the eternal before a man sins and the same after a man sins and repents a God merciful. And gracious Rab Judah said a covenant has been made with the thirteen attributes that they will not be turned away empty handed as it says behold I make a covenant are you had and said great is the power of repentance that it rescinds a man's final sentence as it says make the heart of his people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they seeing with their eyes and hearing with their ears and understanding with their heart return and be healed said our papa to Abbe perhaps this was before the final sentence he replied it is written and he be healed what is that which requires healing you must say the final sentence an objection against this view was raised from the following if one repents in the interval he is forgiven if he does not repent in the interval should he even offer subsequently all the rams of Nebaioth he is not forgiven there is no contradiction the latter statement refers to an individual the former to a community a further objection was raised from the following the eyes of the Lord thy God are upon it the land of Israel sometimes for good sometimes for evil how sometimes for good suppose Israel were in the class of the thoroughly wicked at new year and scanty rains were decreed for them and afterwards they repented for God to increase the supply of rain is impossible because the decree has been issued the Holy One blessed be he therefore sends down the rain in the proper season on the land that requires it all according to the district how sometimes for evil suppose Israel were in the class of the thoroughly virtuous on new year and abundant rains were decreed for them but afterwards they backslided to diminish the rains is impossible because the decree has been issued the Holy One blessed be he therefore sends them down not in their proper season and on land that does not require them now if the decree can be rescinded for good at any rate let the decree be rescinded and let the rains be increased there is a special reason there namely that this is sufficient come and hear a further objection they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters they saw the works of the Lord for he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves thereof they reeled to and fro and staggered like a drunken man they cried unto the Lord in their trouble let them give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy etc the psalmist inserted here signs having the same force as the buts and only of the Torah to indicate that if they cried before the final sentence they were answered but if they cried after the final sentence they were not answered these also are on the same footing as individuals come and hear again glory of the proselyte put this question to Rabbi Gamaliel it is written in your law she said who lifted not up the countenance and it is also written the Lord shall lift up his countenance upon the earth Hosea the priest joined the conversation and said to her, I will give you a parable which will illustrate the matter. A man lent his neighbor a mina and fixed a time for payment in the presence of the king while the other swore to pay him by the life of the king. When the time arrived, he did not pay him and he went to excuse himself to the king. The king, however, said to him, The wrong done to me, I excuse you, but go and obtain forgiveness from
before me and does not the one text apply before the final sentence is pronounced and the other after no both apply after the final sentence has been pronounced yet there is no contradiction in the one case the final sentence has been accompanied by an oath in the other it has not been accompanied by an oath this accords with the dictum of our Samuel BMI for our Samuel BMI or as some say our Samuel BMI said in the name of our Jonathan how do we know that a final sentence accompanied by an oath is never rescinded because it says therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated with sacrifice nor offering Rabbah said with sacrifice and offering it cannot be expiated but it can be expiated with Torah Abbe said with sacrifice and offering it cannot be expiated but it can be expiated with Torah and charitable deeds Rabbah and Abbe were of the house of Eli Rabbah who devoted himself to the Torah lived 40 years Abbe who devoted Himself both to the Torah and to charitable deeds lived sixty years. The rabbis taught there was a family in Jerusalem, the members of which used to die at the age of eighteen. They came and told Rabbi Yohanan Bizakeh, he said to them, Perhaps you are of the family of Elijah, whom it was said, and all the increase of thy house shall die. Young men go and study the Torah, and you may live. They went and studied the Torah and lived, and they used to call that family the family of Rabbi Yohanan after his name. Our Samuel being said in the name of Rabbi, once do we know that the final sentence on a community is never sealed, never sealed? You say, Is it not written, Thine iniquity is marked before me? What he should say is, How do we know that although it is sealed, it can yet be rescinded? Because it says, As the Lord our God is whenever we call upon him, but it is written, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. This verse speaks of an individual, the other a community. When can an individual find God? Rabbi Biaboah said these are the ten days between New Year and the Day of Atonement, and it came to pass after the ten days that the Lord smote Nabal. How come these ten days here? Rabbi Judah said in the name of Rabbi they correspond to the ten dishes which Nabal gave to the servants of David. Arnaman said in the name of Rabbi Biaboah these are the ten days between New Year and the Day of Atonement. On New Year all mankind passed before him like children of Maron. What is the meaning of it? Expression like children of Maron in Babylon. It was translated like a flock of sheep. Rush said as in the ascent of Beth Maron. Rabbi Judah said in the name of Samuel like the troops of the house of David. Rabbi Bar said in the name of Aryohan and all the same they are all viewed with a simple glance. Arnaman B. Isaac said we also have learned the same idea. He that fashioneth the hearts of them all that considereth all their doings. What does this mean? Shall I say that it means this? That God has created all creatures and unites all their hearts together, but we see that this is not so. No, what it means is this: the Creator sees their hearts together and considereth all their doings. Mishnah, there are six new moons to report, which messengers go forth from Jerusalem to the diaspora. The new moon of Nisan on account of Passover, of on account of the fast of Elul, on account of New Year of Tishri, for the adjustment of the festivals of Kislev, on account of Hanukkah and of Adar, on account of Purim. When the temples stood, they used also to go forth to report Iyar on account of the lesser Passover. Tomorrow, why should they not also go forth to report Tammuz and David Talmud? Mas Rosh Hashanah, be seeing that our Hanabi business has said in the name of our Simeon the Saint, what is the meaning of the verse? Thus had said the Lord of hosts: the fast of the fourth month and the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and. Gladness the prophet calls these days both days of fasting and days of joy signifying that when there is peace they shall be for joy and gladness but if there is not peace they shall be fast days our papa replied what it means is this when there is peace they shall be for joy and gladness if there is persecution they shall be fast days if there is no persecution but yet not peace then those who desire may fast and those who desire need not fast if that is the case the ninth of also should be optional our papa replied the ninth of is in a different category because several misfortunes happened on it as a master has said on the ninth of the temple was destroyed both the first time and the second time and Bethar was captured and the city Jerusalem was plotted has been taught our Simeon said there are four expositions among those given by our Akiba with which I do not agree he said the fast of the fourth month this is the ninth of Tammuz on which a breach was made in it Walls of the city as it says on the fourth month on the ninth of the month the famine was sore in the city so that there was no bread for the people of the land and a breach was made in the city why is it called forth as being forth in the order of months the fast of the fifth month this is the ninth of upon which the house of our God was burnt why is it called fifth as being fifth in the order of months the fast of the seventh month this is the third of Tishri on which Gedaliah the son of Ahikam was killed who killed him Ishmael the son of Nethanai killed him and the fact that a fast was instituted on this day shows that the death of the righteous is put on a level with the burning of the house of our God why is it called the seventh as being the seventh in the order of months the fast of the tenth month this is the tenth of David on which the king of Babylon invested Jerusalem as it says and the word of the Lord came unto me in the ninth year in the tenth month in the tenth Day of the month, saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the day, even of the self same day, the self same day the king of Babylon hath invested Jerusalem. Why is it called the tenth as being the tenth in the order of months? It might be asked, should not this have been mentioned first? Why then was it mentioned in this place last so as to arrange the months in their proper order? I, however, continued, our Simeon, do not explain thus what I say is that the fast of the tenth month is the fifth of Tabath, on which news came to the captivity that the city had been smitten, as it says, and it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity in the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, that one who had escaped out of Jerusalem came to me, saying, The city is smitten, and they put the day of the report on the same footing as the day of burning. My view is more probable than is because I make the first mentioned by the prophet first chronologically and the last last, whereas he makes it. First last and the last first he however following only the order of months I also follow the order of calamities it has been stated elsewhere Rab and Arhanan hold that the Megillath Tyaneth has been annulled whereas Aryohanan and Reshalakish hold that the Megillath Tyaneth has not been annulled Rab and Arhanan hold that the Megillath Tyaneth has been annulled interpreting the words of the prophet thus when there is peace these days shall be for joy and gladness but when there is no peace they shall be fast and placing the days mentioned in the Megillath Tyaneth on the same footing Aryohanan and Reshalakish hold that the Megillath Tyaneth has not been annulled maintaining that it was those others mentioned by the prophet that the all merciful made dependent on the existence of the temple but these mentioned in Megillath Tyaneth remain unaffected Arkahana cited the following in objection on one occasion a fast was decreed in Lida on Hanukkah and our Eliezer went down there and Baith and our Joshua had his hair cut and they said to the inhabitants go and fast in atonement for having fasted on this day our Joseph said Hanukkah is different because there is a religious ceremony attached to it said Abbe to him let it be abolished and its ceremony with it our Joseph thereupon corrected himself and said Hanukkah is different because it commemorates publicly a miracle our Ahabi who raised an objection from the following on the third of Tishri the mention of God in bonds was abolished for the Grecian government had forbidden the mention of God's name by the Israelites and when the government of the Hasmoneans became strong and defeated them they ordained that they should mention the name of God even on bonds and they used to write thus in the year so and so of Yohanan high priest to the most high God and when the sages heard of it they said tomorrow this man will pay his debt and the bond will be thrown on a dunghill and they stopped them and they made that day a feast day now if you maintain that the Megillath Tyaneth has been annulled is it possible that while the former prohibitions of fasting have been annulled new ones should be added with what are we here dealing with the period when the temple was still standing Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah but if that is so cannot the prohibition of the third of Tishri be derived from the fact that it was a day on which Gedaliah the son of Ahikam was killed Rab replied its insertion in the Megillath Tyaneth was required only to prohibit the day before it also but the prohibition of the day before it can also be derived from the fact that it is a day after new moon new moon is ordained by the written law and the ordinances of the written law do not require reinforcement as it has been taught these days which are mentioned in Megillath Tyaneth are forbidden for fasting on along with both the day before them and the day after them as two Sabbaths and new Moons they themselves are forbidden, but the days before and after them are permitted. What is the difference between one set and the other? The one set are ordained by
Know that Arjuna was Armaeer's disciple because it has been taught if holes were made in a vessel of glass and filled up with lead Ar Simeon B. Gamaliel reports that Arjuna B. Shamuay in the name of Armaeer declares it unclean Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah B. Whereas the sages declare it clean there is a difference of opinion between Tanaim as to whether the Megillah Tayanath has been annulled as it has been taught these days which are mentioned in the Megillah Tayanath are prohibited to be. Kept as fast days whether in the period when the temple is standing or in the period when the temple is not standing so Armaeer Arjuna says in the period when the temple is standing they are prohibited because the Israel have cause for rejoicing in the period when the temple is not standing they are permitted because they have cause for mourning the laws that these prohibitions are annulled and the laws that they are not annulled there is a contradiction is there not between these two. Laws there is no contradiction the one relates to Hanukkah and Purim the other to the other days of Elul on account of New Year of Tishri for the adjustment of the festivals once the messengers have gone forth to report the new moon of Elul why should they be required to do so for Tishri should you reply that the reason is because perhaps Elul has been prolonged this cannot be because our Hina Nabi has said in the name of Rabbi from the days of Ezra onwards we have found no instance of Elul being prolonged exactly so we find no instance because there was no reason to prolong it where however there is a special reason we do prolong it but in that case New Year is interfered with it is better that New Year should be interfered with than that all the festivals should be interfered with there is also an indication that this view is correct in the language of the mission which states of Tishri for the adjustment of the festivals this is clear proof of Kislev on account. Of Hanukkah and of Adar on account of Purim, the Mishnah, however, does not say when the year is prolonged. Messengers go forth to report the new moon of the second Adar. Also, on account of Purim, this shows that our Mishnah does not agree with Rabbi, since it has been taught. Rabbi says that if the year has been prolonged, messengers go forth to report. Also, regarding the second Adar on account of Purim, shall we say that the point on which they join issue is this: that one authority holds at all. The ceremonies observed in the second Adar are observed also in the first, while the other holds that the ceremonies observed in the second are not observed in the first. No, both hold that the ceremonies observed in the second are not observed in the first. And here they differ on the question of the prolongation of the year, as it has been taught. How long is the period of the prolongation of the year? Thirty days. Simeon B. Gamaliel, however, says a month. But why should only the one who says thirty? Days require no messengers to be sent because you say people in this case know when the month ends if the period is a month they also know our Papa said the one who said a month holds that the Beth Din may prolong a year either by 30 days or by a month at their option our Joshua B. Levi testified on behalf of the holy community of Jerusalem concerning the two Adars that they are sanctified on the day of their prolongation this is equivalent to saying that we make them defective but we do not make them full and excludes the statement made in a discourse by our Naman B. Hisdaf or our Naman B. Hisdaf stated in a discourse our Semi testified in the name of Hadi Zechariah and Malachi concerning the two Adars that if they the Beth Din desired they could make both of them full and if they desired they could make both of them defective and if they desired they could make one full and the other defective and such was their custom in the diaspora in the name of our teacher however they Said one is always to be full and the next defective unless you have been informed that new moon has been fixed at its proper time they sent from Palestine to Marakba to say the Adar which precedes Nisan is always defective Arnaman raised an objection from the following for the fixing of two new moons the Sabbath may be profaned for those of Nisan and of Tishri now if you say that the Adar before Nisan is sometimes full and sometimes defective I can understand how occasions arise for profaning the Sabbath Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah but if it is always defective why should they profane it because it is a religious duty to sanctify the new moon on the strength of actual observation according to another version Arnaman said we also have learned for the fixing of two new moons the Sabbath may be profaned for those of Nisan and of Tishri now if you say that the Adar which precedes Nisan is always defective there is no difficulty the reason why Sabbath may be profaned is because it is a religious duty to sanctify the new moon on the strength of actual observation. But if you say that it is sometimes full and sometimes defective, why should the Sabbath be profaned? Let us prolong a month today and sanctify the new moon tomorrow. If the thirtieth day happens to be on Sabbath, that is actually what we do here. However, we are dealing with the case where the thirty-first day happens to fall on Sabbath, and we allow the Sabbath to be profaned because it is a religious duty to sanctify on the strength of actual observation. Our Kahana raised against the instruction sent to Marak by the following objection: When the temple stood, Sabbath was profaned for the fixing of all the months for the sake of the adjustment of the sacrifice. Now, since the reason for allowing the profanation of the Sabbath was not in the case of all the other months, because it is a religious duty to sanctify on the strength of actual observation, neither. Is the reason in the case of Nissan and Tishri because it is a religious duty to sanctify on the strength of actual observation. Now, if you say that the Adar preceding Nissan is sometimes full and sometimes defective, there is no difficulty for the reason mentioned. We allow the profanation of the Sabbath, but if you say that it is always defective, why should we allow the profanation? This is unanswerable. When Ula came from Palestine to Babylon, he said they have prolonged Elul. Said Ula thereupon, Do our Babylonian colleagues recognize what a boon we are conferring on them? What was the boon Ula said on account of the vegetables? Our Ahabi Hanan said on account of the unburied dead. What difference does it make in practice? Which view we adopt here? There is a difference in the case of the Day of Atonement coming just after Sabbath. According to him who says that the reason is because of the unburied dead, we prolong Elul so as to prevent this. But according to him who says that it is. Because of vegetables we do not do so because when are the vegetables required for the evening after the Day of Atonement and in the evening we can get fresh ones but even if we accept the view that the reason is because of vegetables we should still prolong a little because of the unburied dead we must therefore say that the practical difference is in the case of a festival which comes just before or just after Sabbath in such a case according to him who says the reason is because of vegetables we prolong a little to prevent this but according to him who says it is because of the unburied dead we do not do so because they can be attended to by heathens but even if we accept the view that it is because of the unburied dead let us still prolong a little on account of the vegetables vegetables can be freshened by being put in hot water if that is the case why is it a boon only for us in Babylon why not also for them in Palestine we suffer from oppressive heat they do. Not suffer from oppressive heat is all this correct seeing that Rabbi B. Samuel has learned I might think that just as the year is prolonged in case of emergency so the month may be prolonged to meet an emergency therefore it says this month is for you the head of months which implies see the moon like this and then sanctify Rabbi replied there is no contradiction in the one's case we speak of prolonging the month and the other of sanctifying it and what the above teaching meant is this I might say that just as the year is prolonged to meet an emergency so the month may be sanctified to meet an emergency therefore it says this month is for you see the moon like this and then sanctify this is illustrated by the dictum of our Joshua B. Levi witnesses can be intimidated to withhold the report of the new moon which has appeared in its due time in order that the month may be prolonged but they may not be intimidated into reporting the new moon which has not appeared in its proper Time in order that a new moon may be sanctified on the 30th is this so did not our Judah the prince send to our MI a message saying know that when our Yohanan was alive he used to teach us that witnesses may be intimidated into reporting on the 30th day the new moon which has not appeared in its due time in order that the new moon may be sanctified and even though they have not seen it they may say we have seen it Abbe said there is no contradiction the one rule holds good for Nissan. And Tishri the other for the other months of the year Rabbi said this teaching which Rabbi B. Samuel learned follows the others as it has been taught others say that between one Pentecost and another and between one New Year and another there are always four days of the week difference or if it was a leap year five Ardimi from Nihardi reports the teaching in the reverse form witnesses can be intimidated to report on the 30th day the appearance of the moon which has not appeared in its Proper time in order that the month may be sanctified, but they may not be intimidated to withhold the report of the new moon which has been seen at its proper time in order that the month may be prolonged. What is the reason Talmud? Mas Rosh Hashanah B. The latter statement would be seen to be false. The former statement is not seen to be false. Samuel said,
The in Palestine 6 to the new and 18 to the old one is the practical value of this remark. Rashi said to confute the witnesses, the master has just said it is necessary that there should be a new moon a night and a day of the new moon. Whence is this rule derived? Are Yohanan said from the text from evening to evening? Rashi said from the text until the 21st day of the month in the evening. What practical difference is there between them? Abbe said the difference. Between them is only one of exegesis. Rabbah said they differ in regard to the hours up to midnight. Arzara said in the name of our Naman, wherever an extra day is kept out of doubt, we make it the succeeding day. This means to say that we keep Passover and tabernacles on the 15th and 16th, but not on the 14th. But should not the 14th also be kept in case both of Enelul have been declared sure Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, if two successive months are declared sure Thing becomes known by once arrived in Babylon on the 11th of Tishri. He said to the people there, How good and sweet is the dish of the Babylonians on the great day of the West. They said to him, Testify that this is the tenth day. He replied, I did not personally hear the Beth din in Jerusalem proclaim sanctified. Are Yohanan issued a proclamation in all those places which can be reached by the messenger sent out in Nisan, but not by those sent out in Tishri. Two days should be kept on. Passover Nisan being included so that there should be no mistake as to Tishri. Are Abu and Arhai Abu once arrived at a certain place which had been reached by the messenger sent out in Nisan, but not by those sent out in Tishri. And though the inhabitants kept only one day of Passover, they did not reprove them. When Are Yohanan heard this, he was annoyed and said to them, Did I not tell you that in places which have been reached by the messenger sent out in Nisan, but not by those sent? Out in Tishri they should keep two days in being included so that no mistake should be made in Tishri. Rabba was accustomed to fast two days on the Day of Atonement once he was found to be right. Arnaman had once fasted the whole of the Day of Atonement when in the evening a man came and told him tomorrow is the great day in the West. He said to him, Whence are you? He replied, From Damharia blood will be his ladder and he ejaculated applying to himself the verse swift where our pursuers are. Hunabi Abin sent an instruction to Rabba when you see that the cycle of Tevath extends to the 16th of Nisan declare that you're a leap year and have no scruples since it is written observe the month Hoj of Abib which signifies see to it that the Abib of the cycle should commence in the earlier half Hoj of Nisan. Arnaman said to those who were going to see as you will not know when new moon is fixed I will tell you what to do when you see the moon ceases shining with daylight clear. Away 11 for Passover when does it so shine on the 15th of the month but we clear away 11 on the 14th for them as they had a clear view the moon commenced to shine into the day from the 14th Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah be mission for the sake of two months Sabbath may be profaned namely Nisan and Tishri since in the messengers go forth to Syria and in them the dates of the festivals are fixed when the temple was standing they used to profane Sabbath for all the months. In order that the sacrifice of new moon might be offered on the right day Gemara do messengers go forth for two months only the following was cited as conflicting with this messengers go forth to proclaim six months Abbe replied what is meant is this for all the other months the messengers set out while is it still night but for Nisan and Tishri they do not set out till they have heard the Beth din proclaim sanctified it has been taught to the same effect for all the other months they the messengers went forth while it was still night, but for Nisan and Tishri, not until they had heard the Beth din proclaim sanctified. Our rabbis taught, How do we know from the scripture that Sabbath may be profaned on account of these? Because it says these are the appointed seasons of the Lord which ye shall proclaim in their appointed season. I might say then that just as it may be profaned until they the months are sanctified, so it may be profaned further until they are promulgated. Not so, since it says which ye shall proclaim for their proclamation, you may profane the Sabbath, but not for their promulgation. When the temple was standing, they used to profane Sabbath for all the months in order that the sacrifice might be offered on the right day. Our rabbis taught originally the Sabbath could be profaned for all of them when the temple was destroyed. Rabbi Yohan and Bizakai said to them, The Beth din is there then a sacrifice waiting to be brought, they therefore ordained. That Sabbath should not be profaned save for Nisan and Tishri alone. Mishnah, whether the new moon has been seen clearly or has not been seen clearly, Sabbath may be profaned on account of it. Our Jose says, however, that if it has been seen clearly, Sabbath is not to be profaned on account of it. It happened once that more than forty pairs of witnesses were on their way to Jerusalem, and our Akiba detained them in Lit Argamaliel thereupon sent to him, saying, If you prevent the multitude from coming, to give evidence you will prove to be the cause of their stumbling in the time to come tomorrow. How do we know that the word Alil here means clear? Our replied, Because the scripture says the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the clear sight. Be Alil of the earth refined seven times. Rab and Samuel gave different interpretations of a certain text. One said, Fifty gates of understanding were created in the world, and all were given to Moses, save one as it says, Yet thou hast. Made him but little lower than a god. Now Kahilath sought to find out words of delight, that is to say, Kahilath sought to be like Moses, but a bath went forth and said to him, It is written uprightly, even words of truth. There arose not a prophet again in Israel like Moses. The other said, Among the prophets, there arose not but among the kings there did arise. How then do I interpret the words? Kahilath sought to find out words of delight, Kahilath sought to pronounce verdicts from his own insight. Without witnesses and without warning, whereupon the bath went forth and said, It is written uprightly, even words of truth at the mouth of two witnesses, etc. Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, it happened once that more than forty pairs of witnesses were on their way to Jerusalem and our Akiba detained them, etc. It has been taught our Judah said, Far be it from us to think that our Akiba detained them. It was Jasper the head of Gedder who detained them and Rabban Gamaliel thereupon sent and they deposed him. From his office mission, if a father and a son have seen the new moon, they should both go to Jerusalem, not that they can act as joint witnesses, but so that if one of them is disqualified, the other may join with some other witness. Our Simeon, however, says that a father and son and all relatives are eligible to testify to the appearance of the new moon. Our Jose said it happened once with Tobia the physician that he saw the new moon in Jerusalem along with his son and his emancipated slave, and the priest accepted his evidence and that of his son and disqualified his slave. But when they appeared before the Beth Din, they accepted his evidence and that of his slave and disqualified his son. Gamara our Levi said, What is the reason of our Simeon? Because it is written, and the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, which implies this testimony shall be valid when given by you, and the rabbis it implies this evidence. Shall be entrusted to you, our Jose said it happened once with Tobia the physician, etc. Our Hanan Biraba said the law is as stated by our Simeon, said our Hunan to our Hanan Biraba, we have our Jose and an incident on the other side, and you say that the law is as stated by our Simeon. He replied many times, I said in the presence of Rab, the law is as stated by our Simeon, and he did not correct me. He then asked him, How did you repeat the Mishnah? He or Hanan replied, I repeated it to him with the names. Reversed he or Hunan thereupon said to him, That was the reason why Rab did not correct you. Tabi said in the name of Mari Tabi, who had it from Marakba, the law is as stated by our Simeon. Mishnah, the following are ineligible gamblers, usurers, pigeon flyers, those who traffic in produce of the sabbatical year and slaves. It is a general rule that for any testimony for which a woman is disqualified, these also are disqualified. Gamara, I infer from this that any testimony which a woman is qualified to give. They are also qualified to give Arashi said this is equivalent to saying that one who is rabbinically accounted a robber is qualified to give the same evidence as a woman mission if one who has seen the moon is not able to go on foot he may be brought on an ass or even in a litter on Sabbath if the witnesses are likely to be waylaid they may take cudgels to defend themselves if the distance is great to Jerusalem they may take provisions with them since for as much as a night and a day's journey they were allowed to profane Sabbath and go forth to testify to the appearance of the new moon as it says these are the appointed seasons of the Lord which ye shall proclaim in their appointed season chapteri mission if that one is not known to them the Beth Din in Jerusalem may the Beth Din of his own place send another with him to certify him as reliable originally testimony with regard to the appearance of the new moon was received from anyone when however the Boethians adopted
Hence we are told that this is not so when Allah came to Babylon he announced that they had sanctified the new moon on a certain day in the West Palestine said Arkahada not only in such a case do we take the word of Allah who is a great man but we take the word of any ordinary man what is the reason because whenever a thing is bound to come to light later on men do not lie about it it has been taught to the same effect if a man comes from the other end of the world and says the Beth Din have sanctified the new moon his word is taken originally testimony with regard to the appearance of the new moon was received from anyone our rabbis taught what evil course did the Boethusians adopt once the Boethusians sought to mislead the sages they hired two men for four hundred zoos and one belonging to our party and one to theirs the one of their party gave his evidence and departed our man came and they said to him tell us how you saw the moon he replied I was going up the ascent of Adumum and I saw it couched between two rocks its head like that of a calf its ears like those of a hind and its tail lying between its legs and as I caught sight of it I got a fright and fell backwards and if you do not believe me why I have two hundred zoos tied up in my cloak they said to him who told you to say all this he replied I heard that the Boethusians were seeking to mislead the sages so I said to myself I will go myself and tell them for fear lest untrustworthy men should Come and mislead the sages they said you can have the two hundred zuzim as a present and the man who hired you shall be laid out on the post there and then they ordained that testimony should be received only from persons who were known to the mission originally they used to light beacons when the Kuti and Samaritans adopted evil courses they made a rule that messengers should go forth how did they light the beacons they used to bring long poles of cedar and reeds and olive wood and flax fluff which they tied to the poles with a string and someone used to go up to the top of a mountain and set fire to them and wave them to and fro and up and down until he saw the next one doing the same thing on the top of the second mountain and so on the top of the third mountain once did they carry the chain of beacons from the mount of olives in Jerusalem to Sardaba and from Sardaba to Grafana and from Grafana to Oran and from Oran to Beth Balton the one on Beth Balton did not but from there but went on waving to and fro and up and down until he saw the whole of the diaspora before him like one bonfire tomorrow how do we know that the word Masian connotes burning because it is written in the scripture W.A.I.S.M. David and his men and we translate and David burnt them our rabbis top beacon fires are lit only for the new moon which has been seen at its proper time to announce that it has been sanctified when are they lit on the night following its announcement. This means to say that we light beacons for defective months but not for full months what is the reason our Zara said it is a precaution on account of a defective month which ends on Friday in that case when do we light on the termination of Sabbath and if you were to insist that we should light up also for full months this might give rise Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah to confusion since people would say this month may be defective and the reason why beacons were not lit yesterday is because it was impossible or perhaps it is full and they are lighting up at the proper time but why should we not light up whether for a full month or a defective month and when new moon is on Friday not light up at also that since we do not light at the termination of Sabbath in spite of the fact that we usually light for a full month people will know that it is defective this nevertheless may lead to error since people will say this month is full and the reason why they have not lit up is because they have been prevented but why not light up for the full months and not at all for the defective months Abbe replied so as not to deprive the public of two working days how did they light the beacons they used to bring long poles etc Rab Judah said there are four kinds of cedar cedar kedros pine wood and cypress what is kedros are idris stated that in the school of Arshila it was defined as like though others held that it is gomish Rab Judah differs herein from Rabbi son of Arhuna. For Rabbi Son of Arhuna reported that in the school of Rabbi it was stated that there are ten kinds of cedar as it says I will plant in the wilderness Eres and Hadis and oil tree I will set in the desert Barosh Titter and Tishur together Eres Cedar Shitta is Pine Hadis is Myrtle oil tree is Balsam Barosh is Cypress Titter is Teet Tishur is Larch this makes seven when Ardimi came he said to these were added Alam Almanim and Almagim Alam Terabins Almanim Aroks Almagim Ar. Coral wood according to others it should be Aranim Arminim and Almagim Aranim Ar Batries Arminim Ar Plains Almagim Ar Coral wood neither shall the launch ship pass there by Rab said this refers to the great ship how is it carried out they bring their six thousand men for twelve months or according to others twelve thousand men for six months and load the boat with sand until it rests on the sea bottom then a diver goes down and ties a rope of flax to the coral while the other end is tied to. The ship and the sand is then taken and thrown overboard and as the boat rises it pulls up the coral with it the coral is worth twice its weight in silver there were three ports two belonging to the Romans and one belonging to the Persians from the Roman side they brought up coral from the Persian side pearls this the Persian one was called the port of Mishmahigar Yohanan said every acacia tree that was taken by the invaders from Jerusalem will be restored to it by the Holy One blessed be he. In time to come as it says I will plant in the wilderness the cedar the acacia tree and wilderness means Jerusalem as it is written Zion is become a wilderness etc. Our Yohanan further said one who studies the Torah but does not teach it is like the myrtle in the wilderness others report the saying thus one who studies the Torah and teaches it in a place where there is no other Talmud Hakam is like the myrtle in the wilderness which is precious Our Yohanan also said alas for the idol worshippers. Since they have no means of remedy as it says for brass I will bring gold and for iron I will bring silver and for wood brass and for stones iron but what can they bring to replace our Akiba and his companions of them the scripture says though I cleanse them of other transgressions from their blood I shall not cleanse them once did they carry the chain of beacons etc from Beth Balton what is Beth Balton Rab said this is Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah Bibiram what is meant here by Diaspora Gola. Our Joseph said this is Pumadai the what is meant then by like one big bonfire a taught every inhabitant of Pumadai that takes a torch in his hand and goes up onto his roof it has been taught our Simeon B. Eliezer says beacon fires were lit also on Harem and Kyre and Geter and the neighboring places some say that these places are between those mentioned in the mission others say that they are on the further side from the land of Israel and that one authority the mission reckons it. Places on one side and the other reckons the places on the other are Yohanan said between each one and the next there were eight parasangs how many parasangs then were there altogether thirty two but today there is much more Abbe said the direct roads have been closed as it is written therefore behold I will hedge up thy way with thorns etc. Our and B. Isaac said it is stated in this verse as he hath made my path's crooked mission there was a large court in Jerusalem called Beth Yaizek. There all the witnesses used to assemble and the Beth used to examine them they used to entertain them lavishly there so that they should have an inducement to come originally they used not to leave the place the whole day but Rabban Gamaliel the elder introduced a rule that they could go two thousand cubits from it in any direction these were not the only ones to whom this concession was made a midwife who has come from a distance to help in childbirth or one who comes to rescue from a fire or from bandits or from a river in flood or from a building that has fallen in all these are on the same footing as the residents of the town and may go two thousand cubits on sabbath in any direction Gamar the question was raised do we read here beth yazek or beth yazek do we read beth yazek regarding the name as an elegantia based on the scriptural expressions and he ringed it round and cleared it of stones or do we read beth yazek taking the name to connote constraint as it is written being bound in chains have said come and here a proof that it is the former they used to entertain them lavishly there so that they should have an inducement to come this is not conclusive as perhaps they treated them in both ways mission how do they test the witnesses the pair who arrive first are tested first the senior of them is brought in and they say to him tell us how you saw the moon in front of the sun or behind the sun to the north of it or the south how big was it and in which direction was it inclined and how broad was it if he says he saw it in front of the sun his evidence is rejected after that they would bring in the second and test him if their accounts tallied their evidence was accepted and the other peers were only questioned briefly not because they were required at all but so that they should not be disappointed and so that they should not be dissuaded from coming tomorrow in front of the sun is surely the same as to the north of it and behind the sun is surely the same as to the south of it Abbe said it means whether the concavity of the moon is in front of the sun or behind the sun if he says in front of the sun his evidence is rejected since our Yohanan has said what is meant by the first dominion
Half of it in water, half of it through the clouds, half of it in a mirror. They are not allowed to testify concerning it since you disallow them when they see the whole. Can there be any question when they see only half? In fact, the statement should run as follows: If they say they saw half of it in water and half in the sky, half of it through the clouds and half in the sky, half of it in a mirror and half in the sky, they are not allowed to testify. Our rabbis taught if they say we saw it once but did not see it again, they are not allowed to testify concerning it. Why so are they to go on seeing it the whole time? they replied, What is meant is this: If they say we saw it by chance, but when we came to look for it deliberately, we could not see it. They are not allowed to testify concerning it. What is the reason? Because I might say they saw only a circular disc in the clouds. Mission of the head of the Bethdin says sanctified, and all the people repeat after him sanctified. Sanctified whether the new moon is seen at its proper time or not at its proper time in either case the new moon is sanctified our Eliezer Bizadak however says that if it is not seen as its proper time the new moon is not formally sanctified because heaven has already sanctified it Gemara the head of the Bethdin etc. What is the scriptural warrant for this our high began to set in the name of our Jose B. Saul who had it from Rabbi the scripture says and Moses declared the appointed seasons of the Lord from this we learn that the head of the Bethdin says sanctified and all the people repeat after him sanctified sanctified whence do we learn this our Papa said scripture says which ye shall proclaim them for other read Amar Nam and B. Isaac said we learn it from here even these him are my appointed seasons which implies they shall say my season sanctified sanctified why twice because it is written holy convocations our Eliezer Bizadak says that if it is not seen at its Proper time it is not sanctified it has been taught Polomo says if seen at its time it is not sanctified if seen out of its time it is sanctified our Eliezer B. Simeon says in either case it is not sanctified since it says and ye shall sanctify the fiftieth year which shows that you are to sanctify years but are not to sanctify months Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the Halachah is as laid down by our Eliezer B. Zadikah they said we have also learned to the same effect if the Beth din and all Israel saw it and if the witnesses had been tested but they had no time to say sanctified before it grew dark the month is prolonged which implies that it is prolonged but that the new month is not sanctified later in the day this is not conclusive since there was a special reason for mentioning the prolonging you might think that since the Beth din and all Israel saw it the new moon everyone knew that it had appeared and therefore the month should not be prolonged therefore we are told that this is not so mission our Gamaliel used to have a diagram of faces of the moon on a tablet hung on the wall of his upper chamber and he used to show them to the unlearned and say did it look like this or this Gemara is this allowed seeing that it is written ye shall not make with me which we interpret ye shall not make the likeness of my attendants have they replied the Torah forbade only those attendants of which it is possible to make copies as it has been taught a man may not make a house in the form of the temple or an exeter in the form of the temple hall or a court corresponding to the temple court or a table corresponding to the sacred table or a candlestick corresponding to the sacred candlestick but he may make one Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah be with five or six or eight lamps but with seven he should not make even of other metals our Jose B. Judah said he should not make one even of wood this being the way in which the kings of the house of the Hasmonians made it they Said to him, Can you adduce this as a proof? The spits were of iron, and they overlaid them with tin. When they grew richer, they made them of silver. When they grew richer, still they made them of gold. But is it allowed to make likenesses of attendants of which it is impossible to make copies? Seeing that it has been taught, ye shall not make with me. This implies ye shall not make the likeness of my attendants who minister before me on high. They replied, The Torah forbade only the likeness of it. Four faces altogether. If that is so, the portrait of a human being by himself should be allowed. Why then has it been taught? All portraits are allowed, save the portrait of man. Are who not the son of Aridi? Replied from the discourse of Abay. I learned, Ye shall not make with me. Implies, Ye shall not make me. Still are the other attendants permitted? Seeing that it has been taught, Ye shall not make with me. Ye shall not make the likeness of my attendants who serve before me on high, such as Ophanim and. Seraphim and holy Hayyot and ministering angels have they replied the Torah forbade only the attendants in the upper sphere but are those in the lower sphere permitted has it not been taught which are in the heaven this brings under the rule the sun the moon the stars and constellations above this brings under the rule the ministering angels that statement refers to the prohibition of making a likeness for serving them if for serving them the tiniest worm should also be prohibited yes that is so as it has been taught which are in the earth this brings under the rule mountains hills seas rivers streams and valleys beneath this brings under the rule the tiniest worm but is the mere making allowed has it not been taught ye shall not make with me ye shall not make a likeness of my attendants who minister before me such as the sun the moon the stars and constellations or Gamaliel's case was different because others made for him but what of Rab Judah who had a figure on a seal which others had made for him, and yet Samuel said to him, Shine and put out that fellow's eye. In that case, the seal was projecting, and Samuel forbade it so that it should not arouse suspicion, as it has been taught a ring of which the seal projects must not be worn on the finger, but it is permitted to sign with it. If the seal is sunken, it is permitted to wear it, but forbidden to sign with it. But does it matter if we do arouse suspicion? Was there not a synagogue which moved and settled in Nehardia, and in it was a statue of a king? And Rab and Samuel and the father of Samuel used to go in there to pray, and were not afraid of arousing suspicion where a whole body of persons is concerned. It is different, but Rab and Gamaliel was an individual since he was a Nasi. A large company was always with him. If you like, I can say that it was drawn in sections, or if you like, I can say that he did it for purposes of study, and it is written, Thou shalt not learn to do, which implies that you may learn to understand and to teach mission on one occasion two witnesses came and said we saw it in the morning in the east Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah and in the evening in the west are Yohan and Binuri thereupon said they are false witnesses when however they came to Jabna Rabban Gamaliel accepted them on another occasion two witnesses came and said we saw it at its proper time but on the night which should have been new moon it was not seen and Rabban Gamaliel had already accepted their evidence Rabbi Joseph B. Harkina said they are false witnesses how can men testify that a woman has born a child when on the next day we see her belly still swollen said our Joshua to him I see the force of your argument thereupon Rabban Gamaliel sent to him to say I enjoin upon you to appear before me with your staff and your money on the day which according to your reckoning should be the day of atonement our Akiba went to our Joshua and found him in great distress he said to him I can bring Proof from the scripture that whatever Rabban Gamaliel has done is valid because it says these are the appointed seasons of the Lord holy convocations which ye shall proclaim in their appointed seasons which means to say that whether they are proclaimed at their proper time or not at their proper time I have no appointed season save these here Joshua then went to our dose of Beharkinus who said to him if we call in question the decisions of the Beth din of Rabban Gamaliel we must call in question the decisions of every Beth din which has existed since the days of Moses up to the present time for it says then went up Moses and Aaron Nadab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel why were not the names of the elders mentioned to show that every group of three which has acted as a Beth din over Israel is on a level with the Beth din of Moses here Joshua thereupon took his staff and his money and went to Jabna to Rabban Gamaliel on the day on which the day of atonement fell According to his reckoning, Rabban Gamaliel rose and kissed him on his head and said to him, Come in peace, my teacher and my disciple, my teacher in wisdom and my disciple, because you have accepted my decision. Gamar, it has been taught. Rabban Gamaliel said to the sages, This formula has been handed down to me from the house of my father's father. Sometimes if the moon traverses the heavens by a long course and sometimes by a short course, are you had and said, What is the reason of the house of Rabbi? Because it is written, Who appointeth the moon for seasons? The sun knoweth it is going down, it is the sun which knows it's going down, but the moon does not know it's going down. Our high one saw the old moon in the heavens on the morning of the twenty ninth day. He took a clod of earth and threw it at it, saying, Tonight we want to sanctify you, and are you still here? Go and hide yourself. Rabbi thereupon said to our high, Go to Antop and sanctify the month and send me the watchword, David, King of Israel. Is alive and vigorous. Our rabbis taught once the heavens were covered with clouds and the likeness of the moon was seen on the 
Me he then went to Ardosa Bihar Kinas, etc. Our rabbis taught why were not the names of these elders mentioned so that a man should not say is so and so like Moses and Aaron is so and so like Nadab and Abihu is so and so like Eldad and Medad. Scripture also says and Samuel said to the people it is the Lord that made Moses and Aaron and it says in the same passage and the Lord sent Jerubbaal and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel Jerubbaal is Gideon why is he called Jerubbaal because he contended with Baal. Bedan is Samson why is he called Bedan because he came from Danjatha is Jephthah Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah B. It says also Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among them that call on his name. We see therefore that the scripture places three of the most questionable characters on the same level as three of the most estimable characters to show that Jerubbaal in his generation is like Moses in his generation, Bedan in his generation is like Aaron in his generation, Jephthah in his. Generation is like Samuel in his generation, and to teach you that the most worthless once he has been appointed a leader of the community is to be accounted like the mightiest of the mighty scripture says also, and thou shalt come unto the priests, the levites, and to the judge thou shalt be in those days. Can we then imagine that a man should go to a judge who is not in his days? This shows that you must be content to go to the judge who is in your days. It also says, Say not how was it that the former days were better than these? He took his staff and his money in his hand. Our rabbis taught when Yerabim Gamaliel saw him, he rose from his seat and kissed him on his head, saying, Peace to thee, my teacher and my disciple, my teacher, because thou hast taught me Torah publicly, my disciple, because I lay an injunction on thee, and thou dost carry it out like a disciple. Happy is the generation in which the greater defer to the lesser, and all the more so the lesser to the greater you say all. The more so it is their duty what it means is that because the greater defer to the lesser the lesser apply the lesson to themselves with all the more for C-H-A-P-T-E-R-3 mission if the Beth Din and all Israel saw it if the witnesses were tested and there was no time left to say sanctified before it grew dark then the month is prolonged if the Beth Din alone have seen it two of them should come forward and testify before them and then they can say sanctified sanctified if three persons saw it they themselves constituting the Beth Din two of them should come forward and they should associate some of their colleagues with the one left and they the two should testify before them and they can then say sanctified sanctified this must be done because an individual is not authorized to say sanctified by himself Kamar what need is there to state if the Beth Din and all Israel saw it it is necessary you might think that since the Beth Din and all Israel have seen it everyone knows about it and therefore they should not prolong the month therefore we are told that this is not so but when once it has been stated if the Beth Din and all Israel saw it why should it further say if the witnesses have been tested what it means is or if the witnesses had been tested and there was no time left to say sanctified before it grew dark then the month must be prolonged but when once it has been stated if it grew dark then the month is prolonged why should the testing of it witnesses be mentioned at all it is necessary for you might suppose that the testing of the witnesses is regarded as the commencement of a suit in court and the pronouncement of sanctified sanctified as the end of the suit and therefore they should sanctify at night on the analogy of money suits as we have learned money suits are heard by day and concluded if necessary at night so here we should sanctify at night therefore we are told that this is not so but cannot I say that this actually is the case scripture says for it is a statute for Israel a judgment for the God of Jacob when does the word statute apply to the conclusion of the suit and the all merciful calls it judgment therefore we reason just as judgment is delivered by day so here the pronouncement must be by day if the Beth Din alone have seen it two of them should come forward and testify before them why so surely hearing should not carry greater weight than seeing our Zara said it is necessary if for instance they saw it at night if three persons saw it they themselves constituting the Beth Din two of them should come forward and they should associate some of their colleagues with the one left why so here too we can argue that hearing should not carry greater weight than seeing and should you reply that here too it is necessary if for instance they saw it at night then this is the same case as the one preceding it was necessary to state the last clause is because an individual is not authorized to say sanctified by himself for you might have thought that since it has been taught money suits must be tried before three but one who is a recognized legal expert can try them even alone so here too one might sanctify the month single-handed therefore we are told that this is not so but cannot I say that this actually is the case there was no more universally recognized expert in Israel than Moses and yet the Holy One blessed be he said to him do not sanctify the month until Aaron is with thee as it is written and the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying this month is to you this implies that a witness may act as just shall we say then that our mission does not agree with our Akiva since it has been taught if the Sanhedrin saw a man slay a person Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah some of them act as witnesses and some as judges this is the view of our Tarfan our Akiva says they all act as witnesses and a witness cannot act as a judge you may say that our mission agrees even with our Akiva. Our Akiva meant this rule to apply only to capital cases in regard to which the all-merciful enjoin the congregation shall judge and the congregation shall deliver and since they have seen him slay a person they cannot find any defense for him but in this case even our Akiva would agree that a witness may act as judge mission all kinds of shofar may be used except one made from the horn of a cow because it is properly Karen said our Jose. Are not all shofars called Karen as it says when they make a long blast with the rams Karen horn tomorrow our Jose was surely quite right what can the rabbis reply that all shofars are called both shofar and Karen whereas that of a cow is called Karen but is not called shofar as it is written his firstling bullet majesty is his and his horns Karnar are as the horns of a ram what says our Jose to this he can reply that that of a cow is also called shofar as it is written and it shall please. The Lord better than a bullet sure PAR that hath horns and hoofs now if sure is mentioned here why PAR and if PAR why sure the fact is that sure PAR is equivalent to shofar and the rabbis they adopt the explanation of our madhenna for our madhenna said what is meant by sure PAR a sure which is as full grown as a PAR ola said the reason of the rabbis is to be found in the saying of our hista for our hista said why does not the high priest enter the inner precincts in garments of gold to perform the service there because the accuser may not act as defender is that so what of the blood of the bullock seeing that this has been transformed the objection to it is removed but what of the ark with the mercy seat and the cherub what we say is that the sinner should not bring near the offering but what of the spoon and the censer what we say is that the sinner should not adorn himself but what of the garments of gold which he wore in the outer sanctuary we speak of ministrations in the Inner precincts the shofar also is used in the outer precincts since its purpose is to awaken remembrance it is as if it were used within but the tannis says because it is properly Karen he mentioned only an additional reason one reason is because the accuser cannot act as defender and the other is because it is Karen what says our Jose to this his answer is your statement that the accuser cannot act as defender applies only to the inner precincts and the shofar is used in the outer precincts and as for your statement that the shofar is Karen all shofars are likewise called Karen Abbe said the reason of the rabbis is that the all merciful prescribed a shofar and not two or three shofars and the one made from a cow's horn being in layers looks like two or three shofars but the tannis says because it is properly Karen he stated only an additional reason one reason is that the all merciful prescribed one shofar and not two or three shofars and another reason is that it is Karen what then says our Jose to this he can reply with regard to your statement that the all merciful prescribed one shofar and not two or three shofar since the layers are closely joined together it is really one and as for your statement that it is Karen all shofars are likewise called Karen what proof is there that the word double here means ram as it has been taught our Akiva said when I went to Arabia they used to call a ram Yublad our Akiva further said when I went to Galia they used to call Anita Galmada how Galmada as much as to say Gamula this one is isolated from her husband our Akiva further said when I went to Africa they used to call a Ma'akhezada what is the practical importance of this for explaining the scriptural expression a hundred Kezada it means a hundred Danki Rabbi said when I went to the seaports they called Mekara selling Kira what is the practical importance of this to explain the scriptural expression Asher Karatai or Simeon Belakish Said when I went to the district of Kendishray, they used to call a broad nymph and a coxic a broad nymph. Where do we find this in scripture? Yefen off the joy of the whole earth, a coxic be
not know what was meant by Salsal Ha'edit shall exalt thee one day they heard the handmaid of the household of Rabbi say to a man who was curling his hair how long will you be mesel cell with your hair the rabbis did not know what was meant by we teeth the abimate of destruction till one day they heard the handmaid of the household of Rabbi say to her companion take the tady the broom and tadi sweep the house the rabbis did not know what was meant by cast upon the Lord thy Yahab and he shall sustain thee said Rabbi Barhana one day I was traveling with an Arab and was carrying a load and he said to me lift up your Yahab and put it on one of the camels mission of the shofar used on New Year was of an antelope's horn and straight and its mouth was overlaid with gold there were two trumpets one on each side of it the shofar gave a long blast and the trumpets a short one since the proper ceremony of the day was with the shofar on communal fast days they used two curved Shofars of rams the mouths of which were overlaid with silver there were two trumpets between them a short blast was made with the shofars and a long one with the trumpets because the religious duty of the day was to be performed with the trumpets the jubilee is on a par with new year for blowing the horn and for blessings our judah says on new year the blast is made with the shofar of rams and on jubilees with one of antelopes gemara our levi said the religious duty of new year and of the day of atonement is performed with a curved shofar and on other days in the year with a straight shofar but we learn the shofar of new year was a straight one of antelopes horn levi followed the view of the following ten as it has been taught our judah says on new year they used to blow with curved shofars of rams horns and on jubilees with shofars of antelopes horns why then did not levi say that the law follows the view of our judah if you were to say that the law follows our judah i should say that in the case of the Jubilee also he was of the same opinion as Arjuna. Now we know that this is not so. What is the ground of the difference between Arjuna and the first Tanoan authority? Arjuna holds that on New Year the more a man so to speak bends his mind the more effective is his prayer. While on the day of atonement of the Jubilee the more a man elevates his mind the better is the effect. The other authority holds that on New Year the more a man elevates his mind the better the effect. And on fast days the more he bends his mind the better the effect. Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah and its mouth was overlaid with gold. But has it not been taught if it was overlaid with gold at the place where the mouth is applied it is not valid. If not at the place where the mouth is applied it is valid. Abbe replied when the statement is made in our mission it also refers to the place where the mouth is not applied. There were two trumpets one on each side of it but can two. Distinct sounds be caught at once has it not been taught remember and observe were spoken in a single utterance a thing which transcends the capacity of the human mouth to utter and of the human ear to hear it was for this reason that the blast of the shofar was prolonged this implies that if one heard the end of the blast without the beginning he has performed his duty and from this it would follow that if he heard the beginning of the blast without the end he has equally performed his duty come now and hear a refutation of this idea if he blew tekiah at the beginning of the service and prolonged the second so as to make it equal to two this only counts as one why should this be why should not at the second blast be counted as divided into two we do not divide a tekiah into two come and hear another objection if one blew into a pit or a cistern or a barrel if the sound of the shofar came out pure he has performed his duty but if an echo came out with it he has not performed his duty why should this be cannot he have performed his duty by hearing the beginning of the blast before the sound is confused with the echo the truth is that two utterances proceeding from one man cannot be distinguished but proceeding from two men they can be distinguished but if they proceed from two men can they be distinguished have we not learned in the recital of the Torah in synagogue one may read and another translate what is not allowed is that one should read and two translate the fact is that our case resembles that mentioned in the next clause of this quotation in the recital of Hal and the Megillah even ten may read this shows that since an interest is taken in these the hearer pays close attention so here since an interest is taken he pays close attention and hears the two sounds why then is the blast of the shofar prolonged so that people should know that the proper ceremony of the day is with the shofar on fast days they used Curved shofars of ram's horns, the mouths of which were overlaid with silver. Why in the other case should gold have been used? And here silver, if you like, I can reply that for all public gathering, silver is used as it is written. Make the two trumpets of silver, or if you like, I can say that the Torah wished to spare Israel unnecessary expense. If that is so, we should use silver. In the other case, also even so, this consideration is outweighed by that of paying respect to the holy day. Our Papa B. Samuel was minded to follow the instructions of the mission, but Rabbi said to him, these instructions were laid down only for the sanctuary. It has been taught to the same effect. Where do these rules apply to the sanctuary? But in the provinces where the trumpets are in place, there is no shofar, and where the shofar is in place, there are no trumpets. Our Hilaf adopted the same custom in Zephoris and Arhan and Ibi Teradion in Sikni, and when this was reported to the sages, they said this was not it. Practice save only in the gates of the east and the mount of the temple said Rabbah or it may be our Joshua believe by what is the scriptural warrant for this because it is written with trumpets and the sound of the shofar shall yet before the king the Lord before the king the Lord we require trumpets and the sound of the shofar but elsewhere not the jubilee is on a par with the new year for blowing the horn and for blessings our Samuel B. Isaac asked what authority do we follow in saying nowadays on new year the prayer this day is the beginning of thy works the commemoration of the first day what authority our Eliezer who said that the world was created in Tishri Ariane raised an objection against this view it is stated the jubilee is on a par with the new year for blowing the trumpet and for blessings now how can this be on your view seeing that there is a prayer this day is the beginning of thy works the commemoration of the first day the statement of the mission refers to the other features are Shisha the son of R.E.D. reported the discussion thus our Samuel B. Isaac said the statement of our mission of the Jubilee is on a par with the New Year for blowing the horn and for blessings which authority does it follow not that of our Eliezer for if you were to say it follows our Eliezer seeing that he holds that the world was created in Tishri what would you make of this day is the commencement of thy works the commemoration of the first day which is said on New Year and is not said on the Jubilee the answer is that the mission speaks only of the other features mission a shofar which has been split and stuck together is not valid if fragments of shofars are stuck together to make one it is not valid Talmud Mas Rosh Hashanah B. if a hole in a shofar has been stopped up if it interferes with the blowing it is not valid but otherwise it is valid if one blows into a pit or a cistern or a barrel if he can hear the sound of the shofar pure he has performed his duty. But if he hears the echo also he has not performed his duty similarly if one was passing behind a synagogue or if his house was adjoining the synagogue and he heard the sound of the shofar or of the Megillah being read if he listens with attention he performs the religious precept by so hearing but otherwise he does not although one hears equally with the other yet there is a difference because the one listened with attention while the other did not listen with attention Gemara R. Rabbis taught if the horn was too long and it has been shortened it is valid if it has been scraped till it becomes thin like a wafer it is valid if it is overlaid at the spot where the mouth is applied it is not valid if not at the spot where the mouth is applied it is valid if it is overlaid with gold on the inside it is not valid if on the outside if the sound is thereby changed from what it was before it is not valid but otherwise it is valid if it had a hole which has been stopped up if this interferes with the blast it is not valid but otherwise it is valid if one shofar is put inside another shofar if one can hear the sound of the inner one he thereby performs his religious duty but if he hears the sound of the outer one he does not thereby perform his religious duty our rabbis taught if it was scraped whether on the inside or the outside it is valid if it was scraped till it became thin like a wafer it is valid if one shofar is placed within another if one hears the sound of the inner one he thereby performs his religious duty but if he hears the sound of the outer one he does not thereby perform his religious duty if he turns it inside out and blows it he does not thereby perform his religious duty said our papa do not take this to mean merely if he turned it inside out like a coat but even if he widened the narrow part and narrowed the wide part what is the reason as stated by our mahana for our mahana said and thou shalt carry along we require the horn to be of the shape in which it is carried along our rabbis taught if the least quantity is added to it whether of its own material or of another material it is not valid if there was a hole in it and it is stopped up whether with its own material or another material it is not valid our nathan however says if with its own material it is valid but if with another material it
emitted by a shofar can pass muster they sent to inform the father of Samuel if one pierced at the horn and blew with it he has performed his religious duty is not this obvious all shofars are pierced are as she explained it means if he pierced the inset bone you might think that although it is of the same material it makes a partition we are therefore told that this is not so if one blows into a pit or a cistern etc. Arhuna said this rule applies only to those standing on the edge of the pit. But those standing in the pit perform their religious duty thereby it has been taught to the same effect if one blows into a pit or a cistern he performs his religious duty but have we not learned he does not perform his religious duty you must therefore understand it in the sense of Arhuna's dictum some put the two statements in opposition thus we have learned if one blows into a pit or a cistern he does not perform his religious duty but has it not been taught he does perform his religious duty Arhuna replied there is no contradiction the one statement speaks of those standing on the edge of the pit the other of those standing in the pit Rabbi said Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah if one heard part of the blast in the pit and part of the blast on the edge of the pit he has performed his religious duty if he heard part of the blast before the dawn and part of the blast after dawn he has not performed his religious duty said Abay to him why this difference because in the latter case we require the whole of the blast which he hears to be obligatory and this requirement is not fulfilled in the former case also we require the whole of the blast to be obligatory and this requirement is not fulfilled are the two cases parallel in the latter night is a time to which the obligation does not apply at all but in the former the pit is a place to which the obligation does apply for those who are in the pit I infer from this that Rabbah was of opinion that if one heard the end of a blast without the beginning he has performed his religious duty and that from this it follows that if he heard the beginning without the end he has likewise performed his religious duty come now and hear an objection to this if one blew a tekiah at the beginning of the series and prolonged the second one so as to be equal to two it still counts as only one why should this be let it be counted as divided into two we do not divide tekiah hs come and hear another objection if one blows into a pit or a cistern or a barrel if he hears the sound of the shofar pure he has performed his religious duty but if he hears the echo he has not performed his religious duty why should this be let him have performed his religious duty with the beginning of the blast before the sound is confused with the echo rabble was speaking of one who blows for himself and as he blows steps out of the pit if that is so what is the point of his remark you might argue that sometimes he puts his head out while the shofar is still in the pit and so the sound is confused we are therefore told that this makes no difference rab judah said one should not blow with a shofar taken from a burnt offering but if he did so he has performed his religious duty one should not blow with a shofar taken from a peace offering and if he did so he has not performed his religious duty what is the reason a burnt offering is subject to the rule of trespass and once trespass has been committed with it Becomes unhallowed peace offerings on the other hand not being subject to the rule of trespass are still saddled with their prohibition and do not become unhallowed. Rabbah strongly demurred to this when he said is the trespass committed after he has blown but when he blows he does so with something prohibited. No said Rabbah alike in one case and the other he has not performed his religious duty later however he said alike in one case and in the other he has performed his religious duty because religious precepts are not meant to provide physical enjoyment. Rab Judah said one should not blow with a shofar which has been used for idolatrous purposes but if he does so he has performed his religious duty one should not blow with a shofar from a devoted city and if he does so he has not performed his religious duty what is the reason in a devoted city nothing is presumably left of proper size. Rabbah said if one is interdicted by vow to have any benefit from his neighbor the other may yet Perform the ritual blowing of the shofar for him one too who is interdicted by vow to have any enjoyment from a shofar may yet perform with it the ritual blowing Rabbah further said if one is interdicted by vow to have any benefit from his neighbor the other may yet sprinkle on him the water of the sin offering in the rainy season but not in the summertime one who has vowed to have no enjoyment from a fountain may take a ritual bath in it in the rainy season but not in the summertime they sent to inform the father of Samuel if a man is compelled by force to eat unleavened bread on Passover either by performs his religious duty compelled by whom shall I say by an evil spirit but has it not been taught if a man is sometimes in his sound senses and sometimes crazy when he is in his senses he is regarded as a sane man in all particulars and when he is crazy he is regarded as insane in all particulars or as she said it means if the Persians compelled him said Rabbah this would imply that if one blew the shofar simply to make music he has performed his religious duty is not this obvious this is just what has been said you might argue that in the previous case the all-merciful has prescribed that unleavened bread should be eaten and he has eaten Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah whereas in this case it is written a memorial of blowing the trumpet and this man is merely amusing himself therefore we are told that this argument does not apply we conclude from this that in Rabbis opinion religious precepts do not need to be performed with deliberate intention the following objection was raised against this view if a man was reading the passage of the Shema in the Torah and the time of reading the Shema arrived if he put his mind to it he has performed his religious duty does this not mean put his mind to perform his religious duty no it means put his mind to read distinctly to read but he is reading we speak of one who is reading to correct the scroll come and here if he was passing behind the synagogue or if his house was adjoining the synagogue and he heard the sound of the shofar or of the reading of the Megillah if he put his mind to it he thereby performed his religious duty but if not he did not perform his religious duty does not this mean if he put his mind to perform his religious duty no it means if he put his mind to hear to hear but he is hearing he may think it is merely an aspirating the following objection was raised against this view if the hearer of the shofar put his mind to the act but not the performer or the performer put his mind but not the hearer he did not perform his religious duty he does not do so until both hearer and performer put their minds to the act I understand the case where the performer put his mind but not the hearer as the latter may have thought it was merely an aspirating but that the hearer should put his mind and not the performer how can this happen is it not where the latter Blows merely to make music perhaps it refers to a case where he merely as it were barks said Abbe to him but if that is so then one who sleeps in the sukkah on the eighth day should be flogged he replied not so because I maintain that commandments cannot be transgressed by adding to them save in their proper season our shaman be ever raised the following objection against this view once do we learn that a priest who mounts the platform should not say because the Torah has given me permission to bless Israel I will add a blessing of my own as for instance the Lord the God of your fathers add unto you because it says ye shall not add unto the word now here since he has finished blessing and the time of the precept has passed and yet it states that he transgresses here we are dealing with the case where he has not yet finished the blessings but the statement runs he has finished that means he has finished one blessing but it states he finished all his blessings there is a special reason in this case seeing that if he comes across another congregation he may bless again the whole day is reckoned as the proper time but what is your ground for saying so because we have learned if blood which has to be sprinkled on the altar once has been mixed with other blood which had to be sprinkled once the whole should be sprinkled once if blood which has to be sprinkled four times has been mixed with other blood which has to be sprinkled four times the whole must be sprinkled four times if blood which has to be sprinkled four times is mixed with blood which has to be sprinkled once our Eliezer says the whole should be sprinkled four times our Joshua says it should be sprinkled once said our Eliezer to him by doing so he transgresses the precept of thou shalt not diminish to which our Joshua retorted by doing your way he transgresses the precept of thou shalt not add said our Eliezer to him the precept thou shalt not add applies only when the act is repeated on it. Same subject to which our Joshua replied the precept thou shalt not diminish applies only where the act is withheld from the same subject our Joshua said further to him if you do not sprinkle four times you transgress the rule of thou shalt not diminish but you do not perform any positive action when you do sprinkle you transgress the rule of thou shalt not add and you do perform a positive action now here as soon as he has made one sprinkling for the firstborn its time is passed and yet it says that he transgresses the precept of thou shalt not add and is not the reason for this because we say that since if he gets hold of another firstborn he can sprinkle its blood the whole day is reckoned its proper time no perhaps our Joshua was of opinion that precepts may be transgressed even out of their proper time we argue thus why does our shaman be believe the mission and bring his objection from the very to let him bring his
He does not require to put his mind to it if it is not done in its proper time. He does require to put his mind to it. Arzara said to his attendant Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, put your mind to it and blow the shofar for me. I gather from this that in his opinion the performer requires to put his mind to it. The following was raised in objection against this view if he was passing behind the synagogue or if his house was adjoining the synagogue and he heard the sound of the shofar or the reading. Of the Megillah, if he put his mind to it, he thereby performed his religious duty, but if not, he did not, and if he did put his mind to it, what difference does it make on your theory, seeing that the other, the performer, was not consciously performing for him? We are here speaking of a congregational reader who performs consciously for all come and hear if the hearer put his mind to it, but not the performer, or if the performer put his mind to it, but not the hearer, he did not perform his religious duty, he does not do so until both the hearer and the performer put their mind to it. Here he mentions the performer in the same breath with the hearer to indicate that just as the hearer hears for himself, so the performer performs for himself, and in such a case, he states that he did not perform his religious duty. There is a difference on this point between Tanaim as it has been taught, the hearer hears for himself, and the performer performs for all, and sundry Jose said this. Applies only to a congregational reader, but an ordinary individual does not perform his religious duty until both the hearer and the performer put their mind to it. Mission IT is written, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, etc. Now did the hands of Moses wage war or crush the enemy? Not so only the text signifies that so long as Israel turned their thoughts above and subjected their hearts to their Father in heaven, they prevailed, but otherwise they fell the same. Lesson may be taught thus IT is written, make the a fiery serpent and set it up on a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he sees it shall live. Now did the serpent kill or did the serpent keep alive? No, what it indicates is that when Israel turned their thoughts above and subjected their hearts to their Father in heaven, they were healed, but otherwise they find a way a deaf mute, a lunatic, and a minor cannot perform a religious duty on behalf of a congregation. This is the general principle one who is not himself under obligation to perform a religious duty cannot perform it on behalf of a congregation. Tomorrow our rabbis taught all males are under obligation to blow the shofar priests, levites and lay Israelites, proselytes and emancipated slaves, tumtum and androgynous and one who is half slave and half free a tumtum cannot perform a religious duty either for a fellow tumtum or for anyone else and androgynous can perform a religious duty for a fellow. Androgynous but nor for anyone else one who is half a slave and half free can perform a religious duty neither for one in the same condition nor for anyone else the master has here said all are under obligation to blow the shofar priests, levites and lay Israelites is not this self-evident if these have not the duty who has this had to be stated for you might have argued seeing that it is written a day of blowing the trumpet it shall be to you this obligation devolves upon those who have not. To blow save on one day a year, but since these priests participate in the blowings all through the year as it is written, and ye shall blow with your trumpets over your burnt offerings, I might think that they are not bound to observe this blowing. Therefore, we are told that this is not so. Is there any analogy? You cite trumpets, and we speak of shofar. No, what you must say is this had to be stated. For I might argue that since we have learned the jubilee is on the same footing as New Year in respect of blowing the shofar and blessings, those to whom the injunction of the jubilee applies have to keep the precept of New Year. And since these priests do not come under the obligations of the jubilee, as we have learned, priests and levites may sell at any time and redeem at any time. Therefore, they are not bound to keep the precept of New Year. Therefore, we are told that this is not so. One who is half a slave and half free can perform a religious duty, neither for one who is in the same. Condition nor for anyone else Arhuna said he may however perform the duty for himself said Arnaman to Arhuna what is the reason why he may not perform it for others because the side of slavery in himself cannot perform the duty for the side of freedom in others in regard to himself similarly the side of slavery should not be able to perform the duty for the side of freedom in himself no said Arnaman he cannot perform the duty for himself either it has been taught to the same effect one who is half slave and half free cannot perform the religious duty even for himself Ahab the son of Arzara learned any blessing which one has already recited on behalf of himself he can recite again on behalf of others save the blessing over bread and the blessing over wine these if he has not yet recited on behalf of himself he may recite on behalf of others but if he has already recited them for himself he cannot recite them on behalf of others Rabbi inquired Talmud Masrash. Hashanabi, what is the rule with regard to the blessing for bread set over the mazah and the blessing for wine set in the sanctification? Do we say that since the partaking of these is obligatory, he can perform the duty for others, or have we here perhaps only an optional blessing, not an obligation? Come and here, since Arashi said when we were at the house of our papi, he used to say the sanctification for us, and when his tenants came from the fields, he used to make the sanctification for them. Our rabbis taught a man should not break bread for visitors unless he eats with them, but he may break bread for his children and the members of his household, so as to train them in the performance of religious duties in the reciting of the blessing over hell and the Megillah, even though he has already performed the duty for himself, he may perform it for others. Chapterib Mishnah. If the festive day of New Year fell on a Sabbath, they used to blow the shofar in the temple, but not. In the country after the destruction of the temple, Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai ordained that it should be blown on Sabbath in every place where there was a Beth in our Eliezer said Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai laid down this rule for Jabna only they said to him it applies equally to Jabna and to any place where there is a Beth in Jerusalem had this further superiority over Jabna that in every city from which it could be seen or heard and which was near and from which it was accessible they used to blow on Sabbath whereas in Jabna they used to blow in the Beth in only Gemara once in the scripture is this rule derived our Levi Bilama said one verse says a solemn rest a memorial of blast of horns while another verse says it is a day of blowing the horn unto you yet there is no contradiction as one refers to a festival which falls on Sabbath and the other to a festival which falls on a weekday Rabbi said if the prohibition on Sabbath is from the written law how comes the chauffeur? To be blown in the temple and besides the blowing is no work that a text should be needed to accept it for it was taught in the school of Samuel when it says ye shall do no servile work on New Year this excludes the blowing of the shofar and the taking of bread from the oven these being kinds of skill and not work no said Rabbah according to the written law it is allowed and it is the rabbis who prohibited it as a precaution as stated by Rabbah for Rabbah said all are under obligation to blow the shofar but not all are skilled in the blowing of the shofar hence there is a danger that perhaps one will take it in his hand on Sabbath and go to an expert to learn and carry it four cubits in public domain the same reason applies to the lulav and the same reason to the Megillah after the destruction of the temple Rabban Yohanan ben Zakkai ordained etc our rabbis taught once New Year fell on a Sabbath and all the towns assembled and Rabban Yohanan said to the Bani Bithera let us Blow the chauffeur they said to him let us discuss the matter he said to them let us blow and afterwards discuss after they had blown they said to him let us now discuss the question he replied the horn has already been heard in Jabna and what has been done is no longer open to discussion our Eliezer said Rabban Yohanan ben Zakkai laid down this rule for Jabna only they said to him it applies equally to Jabna and to any place where there is a Beth din what they said to him is the same as the dictum of the first tana there is a difference between them namely in the case of a temporary Beth din they said to him it applies equally to Jabna and to any place where there is a Beth din Arhuna said Talmud Mas Rosh Hashanah the chauffeur on Sabbath is blown only with the Beth din what is meant by with the Beth din in the presence of the Beth din and he means to accept from the permission any blowing on Sabbath not in the presence of the Beth din Rabba raised the following Objection against this view Jerusalem had this further superiority over Jabna etc. What does this further imply? Shall I say that the text is to be taken as it stands and it should have said this simply again should it imply that in Jerusalem private individuals used to blow and in Jabna private individuals did not blow I would ask but did not private individuals blow in Jabna when our Isaac B. Joseph came did he not report that when the congregational reader had finished blowing in Jabna? Man could not hear his own voice for the noise of the blowing of individuals what then must be said is that in Jerusalem the shofar was blown whether during the hours when the
Hours when the Beth Din does not sit, no, it means in fact during the hours when the Beth Din does sit, Arshis hate raised the following objection against this view. The Jubilee is on the same footing as New Year for blowing the shofar and for blessings only on the Jubilee. They blew on Sabbath alike in the Beth Din in which the new moon had been sanctified and in the Beth Din in which the new moon had not been sanctified, and every individual was under obligation to blow, whereas on New Year they blew only in the Beth Din in which the new moon had been sanctified, and private individuals were not under obligation to blow. What is meant by private individuals were not under obligation to blow, shall I say that on the Jubilee individuals used to blow a shofar and on New Year individuals did not blow? This cannot be because when our Isaac B. Joseph came, he said that when the congregational reader in Jabna finished blowing, a man could not hear his own voice for the noise of the blowings of Individuals, it must mean then that on the Jubilee they blow both during the hours when the Beth Din sits and also when the Beth Din does not sit, but on New Year they blow when the Beth Din sits, but not when the Beth Din does not sit. Now it states here at any rate that on the Jubilee it is blown whether when the Beth Din is sitting or when it is not sitting. No, what indeed is meant is when the Beth Din sits, and the statement should be understood thus on the Jubilee it is blown during the hours when the Beth Din sits, whether in the presence of the Beth Din or not in the presence of the Beth Din, but on New Year it is blown only when the Beth Din sits, and in the presence of the Beth Din it has also been stated elsewhere. Our high began to set in the name of our Jose B. Saul who had it from Rabbi the Shofar is blown only during the hours that the Beth Din sits. Our Zara inquired if they have made ready to rise, what is the rule? Is it necessary that the Beth Din should be still seated and this condition is fulfilled, or is it necessary that it should be during the sitting of the Beth Din and this condition is not fulfilled? This question is left undecided. Jerusalem had this further superiority over Jabna, etc., from which it could be seen. This excludes one situated in a valley or herd, this excludes one situated on the top of a mountain or near, this excludes one situated beyond the Sabbath limit or from which it was accessible, this excludes one separated from it by River Misha. Originally, the Lulab was shaken in the sanctuary during seven days and in the country only one day when the temple was destroyed. Rabban Yohan and Bizakhe ordained that the Lulab should be shaken in the country seven days in remembrance of the sanctuary. He also ordained that during the whole of the day of the waving of the Omer, the new corn should be forbidden. Gamara, what is our warrant for doing things in remembrance of the temple? Because the scripture says, For I will restore health unto. The and I will heal thee of thy wound, saith the Lord, because they have called thee an outcast. She is Zion. There is none that inquired after her from this. We gather that she ought to be inquired after that the whole of the day of waving the Omer, the new corn should be forbidden. What is the reason the temple let us hope will speedily be rebuilt? And the Jews will then say, Last year did we not eat the new corn from daybreak? Now too let us eat they not knowing that last year when there was no waving of the Omer, it was daybreak which rendered the new corn permissible. But now that there is the Omer, it is the Omer which renders it permissible. When are we supposing it will be built? Shall I say it will be built on the 16th of Nisan and daybreak of the 16th will render the new corn permissible? Shall I say then that it will be built on the 15th? Then let the new corn become permissible from midday on the 16th since we have learned those who are at a Distance from the temple are allowed to eat the new corn from midday because the Beth Din do not procrastinate with the Omer. The rule is necessary in case the temple will be built on the 15th shortly before sunset or also in case it will be built by night. Arnam and B. Isaac, however, said Rabban Yohan and B. Zakhe Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah B. based his rule on the view enunciated later by our Judah who said, Ye shall neither eat bread until the self same day. This means until the termination of the day, and he was of the opinion that the expression until is inclusive of its object. But did Rabban Yohan concur with him or Judah? Did he not join issue with him as we have learned when the temple was destroyed? Rabban Yohan and B. Zakhe ordained that during the whole of the day of waving the Omer, the new corn should be forbidden, said our Judah. Is it not forbidden from the Torah as it is written until the self same day? On that occasion, it was our Judah who made a mistake. He Thought that Rabban Yohan and Bizakhe declared it only rabbinically forbidden, but this is not the case. He declared it forbidden from the Pentateuch, but it is stated that he ordained what is meant here by ordained. It means he expounded the text and ordained Mishnah. Originally, they used to accept testimony with regard to the new moon during the whole of the day. On one occasion, the witnesses were late in arriving, and the Levites went wrong in the daily hymn. It was therefore ordained that testimony should be accepted on New Year only until the afternoon sacrifice, and that if witnesses came after the afternoon sacrifice, that day should be kept as holy. And also, the next day after the destruction of the temple, Rabban Yohan and Bizakhe ordained that testimony with regard to the new moon should be received during the whole of the day. Gemara, how did the Levites go wrong in the daily psalm here in Babylon? It was explained that they did not say any psalm at all. Arzera, however, said. That they recited the weekday psalm along with the regular sacrifice of the afternoon said Arzera to Ahabah his son go and cite to them the Babylonians the following very though they made a rule that testimony with regard to the new moon should not be received unless there was still time left to offer the regular sacrifices and the additional sacrifices and their drink offerings and to recite the psalm without confusion now if you hold that they said the weekday psalm we understand how there is a possibility of confusion but if they did not say any psalm at all how could there be confusion since they did not say a psalm at all there could be no confusion greater than this Arahab who raised the following objection against this latter view the regular morning sacrifice on New Year is offered in the usual way over the additional sacrifice what psalm is said the one commencing sing aloud unto God our strength make a terror unto the God of Jacob at the afternoon sacrifice what did they say the psalm containing the words the voice of the Lord shake the wilderness when New Year fell on a Thursday for which the regular psalm is sing aloud unto God our strength they did not say sing aloud at the morning service because the same section was afterwards repeated what then did they say I removed his shoulder from the burden if however witnesses came after the regular morning sacrifice they said sing aloud although the verse might afterwards have to be repeated now if you hold that wherever there is a doubt we say the weekday psalm we understand the statement here that it might be repeated but if you hold that they said no psalm at all what is meant by repeating a Talmud Mas Rosh Hashanah there the case is different because it is the psalm of the day it has been taught our Judah said in the name of our Akiva on the first day of the week what psalm did they the love it say the one commencing the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof because he took Possession and gave possession and was sole ruler in his universe on the second day. What did they say? The one commencing great is the Lord and highly to be praised because he divided his works and reigned over them like a king on the third day. They said, God standeth in the congregation of God because he revealed the earth in his wisdom and established the world for his community. On the fourth day, they said, O Lord, thou God to whom vengeance fell and death because he created the sun and the moon and will one day punish those who serve them. On the fifth day, they said, Sing aloud to the God of our strength because he created fishes and birds to praise his name. On the sixth day, they said, The Lord reigneth, he is clothed in majesty because he completed his work and reigned over his creatures. On the seventh day, they said, A psalm, a song for the Sabbath day to wit for the day which will be all Sabbath said. Our Nehemiah, what ground had the sages for making a difference between these sections? No one. The first day the reason for the psalm said is because he took possession and gave possession and was sole ruler in his world on the second day because he divided and ruled over them on the third day because he revealed the earth in his wisdom and established the world for his community on the fourth day because he created the sun and the moon and will one day punish those who serve them on the fifth day because he created birds and fishes to praise his name on the sixth day because he completed his work and reigned over his creatures on the seventh day because he rested the point at issue between them is whether to accept or not the dictum of Arkatna for Arkatna said the world is to last six thousand years and one thousand it will be desolate as it says and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day of however said it will be desolate two thousand as it says after two days he will revive us at the additional sacrifice of Sabbath what did they say Arain and Birabah said in the name of Rab Hazelak Arhan and Birabah said also in the name of Rab as these sections are divided here so they are divided when read on Sabbath in the synagogue at the afternoon sacrifice of Sabbath what did they say our Yohanan said and sang and who is like thee and then
Corner of the house stop and in a house in common with a contentious woman from the roof to the wall as it is written Behold the Lord stood by wall made by a plumb line from the wall to the town as it is written The voice of the Lord cried unto the city and from the city to the mountain as it is written And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain which is on the east side of the city And from the mountain to the wilderness as it is written it is Better to dwell in a desert land than with a contentious woman and from the wilderness it went and abode in its own place as it is written I shall go and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt are you had and said the divine presence tarried for Israel in the wilderness six months in the hope that they would repent when it saw that they did not repent it said let their soul expire as it says but the eyes of the wicked shall fail and they shall have no way to flee and their hope shall be the expiry of the soul correspondingly the Sanhedrin wandered to ten places of banishment as we know from tradition namely from the chamber of hewn stone to Hunnath and from Hunnath to Jerusalem and from Jerusalem to Jabna Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah and from Jabna to Isha and from Isha back to Jabna and from Jabna back to Isha and from Isha to Shepharam and from Shepharam to Beth and from Beth to Sephoris and from Sephoris to Tiberias and Tiberias is it. Lowest lying of them all as it says and brought down thou shalt speak out of the ground our Eliezer says there were six banishments as it says for he hath brought down them that dwell on high the lofty city laying it low laying it low even to the ground bringing it even to the dust said our Yohanan and from there they are destined to be redeemed as it says shake thyself from the dust arise mission our Joshua B. Korha said this further regulation did our Yohanan be Zakay make that should the head of it. Bethdin be in some other place the witnesses should still proceed only to the place of the assembly Gamar a certain woman was summoned to appear before Amimar in Nihardi Amin while Amimar went to Mahuza but she did not follow him he accordingly wrote out a summons under the penalty of the band against her said our Ashi to Amimar is this right seeing that we have learned should the head of the Bethdin be in some other place the witnesses should still proceed only to the place of the assembly. He replied this refers only to the testimony with regard to the new moon and the reason for it is that if this were to be insisted on the result might be to put a stumbling block in their way for the future but in this case the borrower is a servant to the lender our rabbis have taught the priests are not permitted to ascend the dungeon in their sandals and this is one of the nine regulations laid down by Rabbi Yohanan and Bizakeh what are these nine six mentioned in this chapter and one in the preceding chapter and the following one as it has been taught one who becomes a proselyte at the present time must set aside a quarter for a nest of pigeons said our Simeon B. Elias Rabbi Yohanan took a vote on it and annulled this rule because it may lead to wrongdoing as to the last there is a difference of opinion between our Papa and our Naman B. Isaac our Papa said it was the regulation regarding a vine of the fourth year whereas our Naman B. Isaac said it was the one regarding the thread of Scarlet our papa said it was the regulation regarding the vine of the fourth year for we have learned the fruit of a vine in the fourth year was taken to Jerusalem from any point within a day's journey on all sides the boundary of this area was as follows Alath on the north Akrabath on the south Lid on the west and Jordan on the east in reference to the Sola or as some say Rabbi Beulah said in the name of our Yohanan what was the reason to decorate the streets of Jerusalem with fruit it has been further taught our Eliezer had a vine in its fourth year east of Lid at the side of Kfartabi and our Eliezer had a mind to declare it free to the poor but his disciples said to him Rabbi your colleagues have already taken a vote on it and declared it permitted who are his colleagues Rabbi Yohanan Bizak Arnam and B. Isaac said it was the tongue of Scarlet as it has been taught originally they used to fasten the thread of Scarlet on the door of the temple court on the outside of it Turned white the people used to rejoice and if it did not turn white they were sad they therefore made a rule that it should be fastened to the door of the court on the inside people however still peeped in and saw and if it turned white they rejoiced and if it did not turn white they were sad they therefore made a rule that half of it should be fastened to the rock and half between the horns of the goat that was sent to the wilderness why did not Arnam and B. Isaac accept the view of our Papa? He could reply if you assume that it was our Yohanan B. Zakeh who made the rule about the vine was he the colleague of our Eliezer he was his teacher what replies the other to this since they were his disciples who reported the rule to him it was not the light of them to say to their teacher your teacher why did not our Papa accept the view of Arnam and B. Isaac he could reply if you assume it was our Yohanan B. Zakeh who made the rule was there in the days of our Yohanan B. Zakeh a thread of Scarlet which turned white has it not been taught our Yohanan Bizakeh lived altogether 120 years for 40 years he was in business 40 years he studied and 40 years he taught and it has further been taught for 40 years before the destruction of the temple the thread of scarlet never turned white but it remained red further the statement of the mission is after the destruction of the temple our Yohanan Bizakeh made a rule what says the other to this during those 40 years that he studied his status was that of a disciple sitting before his teacher and he would offer a suggestion and make good his reasons Talmud Mas Rosh Hashanah and his teacher would make it a definite rule in his name mission of the order of blessings in the Muse of Amida is as follows the reader says the blessing of the patriarchs that of mightiness and that of the sanctification of the name and includes the kingship verses with them and does not blow the shofar he then says the sanctification of the day and blows the remembrance verses and blows and the shofar verses and blows and he then says the blessing of the temple SERBLs and the one of thanksgiving and the blessing of the priests this is the view of our Yohanan Binuri said our Akiba to him if he does not blow the shofar for the kingship verses why should he say them no the rule is as follows he says the blessing of the patriarchs and of the resurrection and of the sanctification of the name and says the kingship verses along with the sanctification of the day and blows the shofar then he says the remembrance verses and blows and the shofar verses and blows then he says the temple service blessing and the thanksgiving and the blessing of the priest Gemara said our Akiba to him if he does not blow the shofar for the kingship verses why does he say them he asks why does he say them but the all merciful enjoined that they should be said what he really means is why say ten verses why not only nine because if there is a difference in one particular so there may as well be a difference in another our rabbis taught whence do we learn in the scripture that we are to say the blessing of the patriarchs because it says ascribe unto the Lord O yes sons of might and whence do we learn that we say the blessing of mightiness because it says ascribe unto the Lord glory and strength and whence that we say sanctifications because it says ascribe unto the Lord the glory of his name worship it. Lord in the beauty of holiness whence do we learn that we are to say kingship remembrance and shofar versus our Eliezer says because it is written a solemn rest a memorial proclaimed with the blast of trumpets a holy convocation a solemn rest this indicates the sanctification of the day a memorial this indicates remembrance versus proclaimed with the blast of horns this indicates shofar versus a holy convocation sanctified by abstaining from the doing of works at our Akiva to him why should we not interpret a solemn rest to apply to the abstention from work seeing that the text placed this first no we should interpret thus a solemn rest sanctified by abstaining from the doing of work a memorial this indicates the remembrance verses proclaimed with the blowing of horns this indicates shofar versus a holy convocation this indicates the sanctification of the day once then do we learn that we say kingship versus it has been taught rabbi says i am the lord your god and immediately afterwards in the seventh month this juxtaposition indicates kingship versus our jose b judah said there is no need of such an interpretation for scripture says and they the trumpets shall be to you for a memorial before your god this makes superfluous the succeeding words i am the lord your god what then is the point of the words i am the lord your god this creates a general pattern for all places where we say remembrance verses to show that kingship versus should Accompany them where is the blessing of the sanctification of the day to be said it has been taught rabbi says it should be said with the kingship verses for just as on every other occasion we find that it comes forth in the order of blessing so here it should come forth rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel says it should be said with the remembrance verses just as we find that on all other occasions it is said in the middle so here it should be in the middle when the Beth did sanctify the new moon. In a shot our Yohanan B. Baraka went down before the ark in the presence of rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel and read as prescribed by our Yohanan B. Nuri rabbin Simeon said to him that was not the way they used to do in Jabna on the second day our Hannah the son of our
In the book of Psalms, but there are a large number of praises there. It means those among which occurs praise him with the blowing of the shofar are Joseph said to the Ten Commandments that were spoken to Moses on Sinai are Yohanan said to the ten utterances by means of which the world was created, which are they the phrase and he said occurs in the account of the creation only nine times the words in the beginning are also an utterance as it is written by the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Are Yohanan Binuri said if he says three of each set he has fulfilled his obligation. The question was raised, how is this to be understood? Three from the Pentateuch, three from the prophets, and three from the writings which would make nine for each set so that there is a difference of one between the two authorities, or is it one from the Pentateuch, one from the prophets, and one from the writings making three for each set so that they differ considerably come and here since it has been taught. There must be recited not less than ten kingship verses, ten remembrance verses, and ten shofar verses, but one who said seven of all of them has fulfilled his obligation. These corresponding to seven firmaments are Yohanan Binuri said the lowest number one should say is seven, but if he said even three of them he has fulfilled his obligation. These corresponding to the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, or as others report to priests, Levites, and lay Israelites are who not said in the name of Samuel. Halachah is as laid down by our Yohanan Binuri Mishnah. No mention is made of kingship, remembrance, and shofar verses that signify punishment. It is proper to begin with the Torah and conclude with the prophets. Our Jose said if one concludes with the Torah, he has fulfilled his obligation. Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, be Gemara, what are kingship verses signifying punishment? For instance, as I live, set the Lord God surely with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with fury poured out will I. Speaking over you and although our Naman said, let the Holy One bless be, he be as furious as all this with us, so only that he finally redeem us. Yet since this was spoken in wrath, we do not call wrath to mind at the beginning of the year. Remembrance verses as for instance, and he remembered that they were flesh, etc. Shofar verses as for instance, blow ye the horn in Javia, etc. If however he desires to recite kingship, remembrance, and shofar verses mentioning the punishment of idolaters, he may do so. Kingship verses as for instance, the Lord reignite, let the peoples tremble, or the Lord is king forever and ever. The nations are perished out of his land. Remembrance verses as for instance, remember, O Lord, against the children of Edom, etc. Shofar verses as for instance, and the Lord God will blow the horn and will go with whirlwinds of the south. And the text continues, the Lord of hosts will defend them. On the other hand, a verse mentioning the remembrance of an individual is not recited, even if it is for good as for instance, remember me, O Lord, when thou favorest thy people, or remember unto to me, O my God, for good visitation is equivalent to remembrance as for instance in the verse, and the Lord visited Sarah, or I have surely visited you. This is the view of our Jose our Judah, however, says that visitation is not equivalent to remembrance. Now on our Jose's view, even granting that visitation is equivalent to remembrance, the text and the Lord visited Sarah refers to the visitation of an individual. Does it not since a multitude issued from her, it is as good as a multitude in the text, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in, who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, lift up your heads, O ye gates, ye lift them up ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in, who is the King of glory, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory, the first apostrophe contains two mentions of gods. Kingship and the second three, so our Jose our Judah, however, says that the first contains one and the second two in the text sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our King, sing praises for God is the King of all the earth. There are two mentions of God's kingship, so our Jose our Judah, however, says there is only one. They agree, however, that in the verse God reigneth over the nations, God sitteth upon his holy throne, there is only one a remembrance verse which also mentions blowing teruah. As for instance, a memorial proclaimed with the blast of horns, a holy convocation may be recited either with the remembrance verses or with the shofar verses. So our Jose our Judah, however, says that it may be recited only with the remembrance verses, a kingship verse which also contains mention of blowing. As for instance, the Lord is God is with him, and the shouting teruah each for the king is among them may be recited either with the kingship verses or with the shofar verses. So our Jose our Judah, however. Says that it may be recited only with the kingship verses a verse mentioning simply blowing of the trumpet as for instance it is a day of blowing the horn teruah unto you may be recited with the shofar verses so our Jose our Judah however says that it may not be recited at all it is proper to begin with the Torah and conclude with the prophets our Jose said if one concludes with the Torah he has fulfilled his obligation if one concludes he has fulfilled that is to say the deed having been done but he should not do so in the first instance is this correct seeing that it has been taught our Jose says he who concludes with the Torah verses he is to be commended read he concludes but it states distinctly if he concludes etc which implies that what is done is done but in the first instance it should not be done what is meant is this it is proper to commence with the Torah and conclude with the prophets our Jose said it is proper to conclude with the Torah but if one concluded with the prophets he has fulfilled his obligation it has been taught to the same effect our Eliezer B.R. Jose said the weapon used to conclude with the Torah we can understand this being done with the remembrance and shofar verses because there are numbers of them in the Pentateuch but of kingship verses there are only three because the Lord his God is with him and the shouting for the king is among them and he was king in Jeshurun and the Lord shall reign forever and ever and we require ten verses. In all and in this way we cannot find them are who are replied come and hear here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one this is a kingship verse according to our Jose though our Judah says it is not a kingship verse and thou shalt know on that day and lay it to thy heart that the Lord he is God there is none else is a kingship verse according to our Jose though our Judah says it is not a kingship verse unto thee it was shown that thou mightest know that the Lord he is God there is none else beside. Him is a kingship verse according to our Jose though our Judah says it is not a kingship verse mission of those who pass before the ark on the holy day of New Year the second blows the shofar on days when hallel is said the first reads aloud the hallel tomorrow what special reason is there for the second to blow you must say because of the maxim in the multitude of people is the king's glory but if that is so hallel should also be recited by the second because in the multitude of people is the king's glory should you say however that there is a special reason why hallel is said by the first because the zealous come early for the performance of religious duties then let the blowing of the shofar be performed by the first because the zealous come early for the performance of religious duties or Yohanan replied they made this rule at a time when the government had forbidden the blowing of the shofar since it says on days when hallel is said we infer that on New Year hallel is not said. What is the reason Arabah replied the ministering angel said in the presence of the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe why should Israel not chant hymns of praise before the unnew year and the day of atonement he replied to them is it possible that the king should be sitting on the throne of justice with the books of life and death open before him and Israel should chant hymns of praise mission for the sake of the shofar of new year it is not allowed to disregard the distance limit nor to remove the ring nor to climb a tree nor to ride on an animal nor to swim on the water it must not be shaped either with an implement the use of which is forbidden on account of Shabbat or with one the use of which is forbidden by express prohibition if one however desires to pour wine or water into it he may do so children need not be stopped from blowing on the contrary they may be helped till they learn how to blow one who blows merely to practice does not thereby fulfill his religious obligation nor does one who hears the blast made by another when practicing tomorrow what is the reason why these things may not be done the blowing of the shofar is based on a positive precept whereas the observance of the holy day is based both on a positive and a negative precept and a positive precept cannot override both a positive and a negative precept nor to climb a tree nor to ride on an animal etc seeing that you have not allowed even rabbinical prohibitions to be broken need you mention pentateuchal ones the mission adopts the style of a and needless to say be talmud mas rosh hashanah it must not be shaped either with an implement the use of which is forbidden on account of shabbat or with one the use of which is forbidden by express prohibition an instrument the use of which is forbidden on account of shabbat as for instance a sickle an implement which is forbidden by express prohibition as for instance a knife seeing that you disallow Implement prohibited on account of Shabbat need you mention one disallowed by express prohibition the mission ad
Tell them in the first instance to blow then it states they are not stopped which would indicate that we do not go so far as to stop them but we do not tell them in the first instance to blow there is no contradiction in the one case we speak of Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah be a child old enough to be trained in the performance of religious precepts in the other of one not yet old enough to be trained one who blows merely to practice does not thereby fulfill his religious obligation I infer that. One who blows to make musical sounds does thereby fulfill his religious obligation may we say that this supports Rabba for Rabba said that one who blows to make musical sounds fulfills his religious obligation perhaps our authority includes making music also under the head of practicing nor one who hears the blast made by another when practicing but one who hears the blast from another who is blowing for himself we are to assume does fulfill his obligation if so this would be a refutation of our zero. For our Zara said to his attendant blow with intent to clear me also perhaps our authority having mentioned practicing in the first clause used the same expression in the second mission of the order of the blast consists of three sets of three each the length of a TEKIIS equal to three TERUAHS and the length of a TERUA to three yeah both if one blew the first TEKIIS as usual and prolonged the second so as to make it equal to two it counts only as one if one has said the nine blessings. And then PROC hears a shofar he sounds a TEKIIS TERUA TEKIIS three prohibition and therefore explains that it is the other one whom we may help and this one we simply do not stop times just as the congregational reader is under obligation so every individual is under obligation Rabban Gamaliel however said that the congregational reader clears the whole congregation of their obligation Gamara the length of a TEKIIS equal to three TERUAHS but it has been taught that the length of a Tekiah is equal to a teruah. They replied, Our Tana reckons the Tekiah of all the sets and the teruah of all the sets, whereas the external Tana was reckoning one set and no more. The length of the teruah is equal to the length of three yeah, both, but it has been taught the length of the teruah is equal to three shabarim. They said, Here there is really a difference of opinion. It is written, It shall be a day of teruah unto you, and we translate in Aramaic a day of Yabab, and it is written of the mother of Sisera through the window. She looked forth, W. Yabab, one authority thought that this means drawing along sigh, and the other that it means uttering short piercing cries. Our rabbis taught, Whence do we know that the blowing on New Year must be with a shofar because it says, Thou shalt make proclamation with a shofar of teruah. I know this so far only of the Jubilee. How do I know it of New Year? The text says significantly in the seventh month when there is no real. Occasion for the expression in the seventh month, why then does it say in the seventh month to show that all the Teru AHS of the seventh month should be of the same character? How do we know that there must be a plain blast before it? Because it says, Thou shalt make proclamation with the shofar of Teru. How do we know that there must be a plain blast after it? Because it says, Ye shall make proclamation with the shofar. I know this only of the Jubilee. How do I learn it of New Year? Also, it says, Significantly in the seventh month, Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah, when there is no real occasion for the expression in the seventh month, why then does it say in the seventh month to indicate that all the Teru AHS of the seventh month should be of the same character? How do we know that there must be three sets of three each? Because it says, Thou shalt make proclamation with the shofar of Teru. And again, a solemn rest of memorial of Teru. And again, a day of Teru. It shall be to you and how. Do we know that we can utilize what is said in connection with one for purposes of the other and vice versa? The word seventh occurs twice to provide a gazerish. Why, how then is it carried out? There are three sets which are nine blasts. The length of the tekiah is equal to that of the teruah. The length of the teruah is equal to three shabarim. This tana first derives his inference from an analogy and now he derives it from a gazerish. Why, he reasons thus if there were no gazerish. So why I would derive the inference from analogy now, however, that there is a gazerish. Why, I do not require the analogy. The following tana derives the same lesson from a gazerish. Why, with the blowing of the horn ordained in the wilderness as it has been taught and ye shall blow a teruah. This indicates that there shall be a separate tekiah and a separate teruah. You say there shall be a separate tekiah and a separate teruah, but can it not be interpreted differently, namely that the Tekiah and Teruah are all one when you come to the text but when the assembly is to be gathered together ye shall blow a Tekiah but not a Teruah you must conclude that Tekiah and Teruah are separate and how do we know that a plain blast is to precede it the Teruah because it says and ye shall blow a Teruah and how do we know that a plain blast follows it because it says a Teruah shall be blow our Ishmael the son of our Yohanan be Baraka said this is not necessary for the text says and ye shall blow a Teruah a second time here the words a second time are unnecessary why then are the words a second time inserted this furnishes a general rule that wherever Teruah is mentioned a Tekiah should follow it so far I know this only of the wilderness on what ground can I apply it to New Year also because we find Teruah in one place and Teruah in another place to provide a Gazerisha while three Teruah are mentioned in connection with New Year solemn rest of memorial. Proclaimed with Teruah a day of Teruah and thou shalt make proclamation with the shofar of Teruah each Teruah is accompanied with two Teki AHS we thus learn that three Teruah AHS and six Teki AHS were prescribed for New Year two of these are ordained by the Torah and one by the Sofer and the Teruah AHS mentioned in a solemn rest of memorial of Teruah and, and thou shalt make proclamation with the shofar of Teruah our ordinances of the Torah the text a day of Teruah it shall be to you is required for its own lesson our Samuel B. Naman, he said in the name of our Jonathan one is ordained by the Torah and two by the Sofer and that mentioned in and thou shalt make proclamation with the shofar of Teruah is ordained by the Torah the text a solemn rest of memorial of Teruah and a day of Teruah it shall be to you are required for their own lessons what is meant by saying that if the latter is required for its own lesson it is required to show that the blowing must be in the daytime. And not at night whence does the other authority derive the rule that the blowing must be by day and not by night he derives it from the expression on the day of atonement but if he learns it from on the day of atonement let him also learn from this text the rule that there is to be a plain blast before the teruah and a plain blast after it he does not accept the implication of the expressions and thou shalt proclaim ye shall proclaim how then does he expound these words he expounds and thou shalt proclaim in the same way as our madhenna for our madhenna said and thou shalt proclaim this means in the usual manner of proclamation the words ye shall proclaim mentioned by the all merciful indicate that the shofar should be taken in the hand and the other what says he to this the lesson of our madhenna you can learn from the fact that the text uses an unusual expression but that the word means taking in the hand you could not maintain for one can compare the expression passing here with the expression passing used in connection with Moses it is written here and ye shall cause to pass a shofar of Teruah and it is written elsewhere and Moses commanded and they caused a voice to pass just as there the passing was of a sound so here it is of a sound and to the Tana who derives the rule regarding the Tekiah from the blowing commanded in the wilderness it may be objected that just as their trumpets were to be used so here on New Year trumpets should be used. Therefore it is written blow ye the shofar at the new moon at the concealment for the day of our festival which is a festival on which the moon is concealed you must say that this is New Year and the All-Merciful prescribed the shofar to be used on it or above prescribed in Caesarea that there should be a Tekiah three shofar and and a Tekiah how can this be justified if the sound of Teruah is a kind of wailing then there should be Tekiah Teruah and Tekiah and if it is a kind. A groaning there should be Tekiah three Shabarim and Tekiah he was in doubt whether it was a kind of wailing or a kind of groaning are strongly demurred against this procedure saying perhaps it is a kind of wailing and the three Shabarim make an interruption between the Teruah and the first Tekiah we assume that he afterwards blows Tekiah Teruah Tekiah Rabban is strongly demurred against the saying perhaps it is a kind of sighing and the Teruah makes an interruption between the Shabarim and the second Tekiah we suppose that he afterwards blows Tekiah Shabarim Tekiah what then is the point of Arabab's regulation if it is a groaning sound it has already been made and if it is a wailing sound it has already been made he was in doubt whether it does not include both groaning and wailing if so the reverse should also be carried out namely Tekiah Teruah three Shabarim Tekiah since perhaps it is wailing and groaning ordinarily when a man has a pain he first Groans and then wails if one blew the first TEKI and prolonged the second so as to make it
Days the omission of one blast is no bar to another and the omission of one blessing is no bar to another but on New Year and the Day of Atonement the omission of one blast or one blessing is a bar to the others what is the reason Rabbi said God proclaimed recite before me on New Year kingship remembrance and shofar versus kingship versus to declare me king over you remembrance versus that the remembrance of you may come before me for good and through what through the shofar if one has said. The nine blessings and NPROC hears a shofar he sounds a tekiya teru tekiya the reason is that he had no shofar to begin with this shows that if he had a shofar to begin with when he hears the blast he must hear them during the recital of the blessings our Papa B Samuel rose to say his prayer and at the same time said to his attendant when I give you a sign blow the shofar for me said Rabbi to him this rule was laid down only for a congregation it has been taught to the same effect when he hears the blast he must hear them in order and during the recital of the blessings when does this hold good in a congregation but when not praying with the congregation he must hear them in order but not necessarily during the recital of the blessings if an individual has not blown the shofar another may blow it for him but if an individual has not said the blessings another may not say them for him it is a greater act of piety to hear the shofar than to say the blessings hence if there are two towns in one of which the shofar is being blown and in the other of which the blessings are being said one should go rather to the place where they are blowing than to the place where they are saying the blessings surely this is self-evident the former precept is a pentateuchal sanction the latter only of rabbinic it was necessary to state the rule to show that it still applies even though he is certain of finding an opportunity for the latter and not certain of finding an Opportunity for the former, just as the congregational reader is under obligation, so every individual, etc. It has been taught. They said to Rabban Gamaliel, accepting your view, why do the congregation first say the Amid of prayer? He replied, so as to give the reader time to prepare his prayer. Rabban Gamaliel then said to them, accepting your view, why does the reader go down and stand before the ark? They replied, so as to clear from his obligation one who is not familiar with the prayers. He said to them, just as he clears one who is not familiar, so he clears one who is familiar. Rabbi B. Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan, the sages gave Rabban Gamaliel right. Rab, however, said the difference of opinion still remains high. The son of Rabbi Namani heard the argument reported and went and repeated it before our Dimi Bihina. He said to him, thus said Rab, the difference of opinion still remains. The other said to him, this is what Rabbi Barhana also said that when our Yohanan. Made the statement Reshlech is joined issue with him saying the difference of opinion still remains but did Aryohanan say this has not Arhana of Sephori stated that Aryohanan said that the law follows the view of Rabban Gamaliel and since he said the law is so we infer that there is a difference of opinion Talmud, Mas Rosh Hashanah when RMI returned from a sea voyage he explained that thus the sages give Rabban Gamaliel right in regard to the blessings of New Year and the Day of Atonement and the Halacha is so which implies that they differ in regard to the blessings of the rest of the year but is this so did not Arhana of Sephori say in the name of Aryohanan the Halacha follows Rabban Gamaliel in regard to the blessings of New Year and the Day of Atonement no said Arnam and B. Isaac who is it that gave Rabban Gamaliel right Armair and the Halacha is so which shows that the rabbis refer to the others for it has been taught in regard to the blessings of New Year and the Day of Atonement the reader can clear the congregation of their obligation to say them why should a difference be made in respect of these blessings should you say it is because they contain many scriptural texts has not our Hananiel said in the name of Rab as soon as one has said and in thy law it is written saying he need not recite any more text no the reason is because there is an extra large number of blessings to revert to the above text our Hananiel said in the name of Rab as soon as one has said and in thy law it is written saying he need not recite any more text it was presumed in the academy that this applies only to an individual but not to a congregation it has been stated however elsewhere our Joshua B. Levi said the rule alike for an individual or a congregation is that as soon as they have said and in thy law it is written saying they need not recite any more text our Eliezer said a man should always first prepare himself for his prayer and then say it, Rabbi said the dictum of our Eliezer appears to be well founded in respect of the blessings of New Year and the Day of Atonement and periodical prayers, but not of the rest of the year. Is that so? Did not Rab Judah use always to prepare himself for his prayer before praying? Rab Judah was exceptional since he prayed only every thirty days. It was to him like a periodical prayer. Our Ahabi Ara said in the name of our Simeon the pious Rabban Gamaliel used to allow even the people in the fields to be cleared by the reader in the synagogue. And needless to say, those in town, on the contrary, we should have expected the opposite because the former are prevented from coming and the latter are not prevented in the same way as Abba the son of our Benjamin Behi has stated. The people who stand behind the priests are not included in the priestly benediction. The fact is that when Rabin came from Palestine, he stated in the name of our Jacob B. E. that our Simeon the pious said. Rabban Gamaliel allowed only the people in the fields to be cleared by the reader what is the reason because they are prevented by their work from coming to synagogue those in the town however are not cleared.